Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it is Liquid Otacon. As always, I am joined by ETPC and a gaggle of folks from the dev team today. We've got Ooligan, uh, Mus, uh, Lurker, Hello. Star Newcomb, and October with us um, uh, to, uh, yeah, kind of kick off our third stream of the year this year. We're on a streak. Hell yeah. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, we're gonna be going over all kinds of fun stuff today. We've got, uh, some, uh, new stuff to the dev build to show off. We've got some, uh, more mapping stuff to show off. And, uh, of course, we've got some, um, level design work to be done. Uh, I didn't say it, but today is March 30th, uh, it is one o'clock Eastern, uh, and, uh, and yeah. Let me go ahead and awesome. Good old, good old long weekend dev stream. Yep. Yeah. Hope you're cozy. Yep. So um, uh, we're just gonna kind of uh, start today off because uh, we kind of anticipate uh, a lot of questions about it, anyways. Um, so the uh, the new news that uh, Gearbox has been purchased by uh, by Two K or Take Two. Um, uh, cool. Ugh. You know. Right on for them. Um, uh, yeah. um, you know, it seems um, safer. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it see, uh, emphasis on seems. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, but uh, as far as as far as we're concerned, um, we're kind of still just business as usual. Uh, we're yeah. gonna kind of just keep working along as we've been working along, trying to make a product that we all uh, enjoy and want to play. Um, and we're kind of, as it's always been, we're we're just doing that in, until we can't anymore. So um, we're still gonna be working. We're still gonna be sharing dev streams and stuff like that. Uh, you know, sharing progress we're making and everything else. No, nothing is nothing's really changing. The only thing. Oops. We've discussed a little bit internally, and we still have more discussion about it, is um, we might uh, change up uh, our release schedule a little bit, but uh, we haven't finalized anything or come to any like real solid conclusions on that. So if there's any change to that, of course, our Discord server uh, will be the first place to find out about that. But otherwise, uh, yeah, you know, um, we're just still trucking on. Can't leave it till the fat lady sings. Yep, where all the the wheels fall off. Yep. And so to kind of go along with that, actually, uh, not only are we still working, uh, we're actually looking for some more folks to work with us. Um, uh, we're going to be opening up uh, a couple of our different departments a little bit to some recruitment, I think. Uh, we haven't uh, finalized exactly which departments those are all going to be just yet. But... Um, uh, we have already put up the applications for level designers. So if you are familiar with Unreal 1, you have, uh, you know, some mapping experience and you uh, work well in a, in a team-oriented and driven environment, then uh, we'd definitely love to, to chat with you. Uh, those applications went up on, I think, Thursday, maybe Wednesday, and uh, we'll probably end up starting to review them at the beginning of next week. So if you put in an application already or... Um, uh, uh, you're eager or interested in joining us, hop onto our Discord server and check out the Join the Team channel. Yeah, we're, we're looking for some people to help restore the king to his throne. You got the skills? Come on over. Yep. <laughs> Hello, Toby. That's very nice of you to say. Yes. Howdy, everybody. Um, and then we have one other thing. Uh... Otacon, you recently uh, purchased uh, a product with oh. Duke's Duke's name on it. Yes, absolutely. So, this this stream is not sponsored by G Fuel, no, but we, um, uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But, but you bet that uh, <laughs> I couldn't help myself, and um, uh, I had to pick some up, especially. <laughs> and I'll give this uh, hint out to everybody else too, if you're thinking about picking up something like this. If you make an account on their website and then don't buy anything. They send you a thirty percent off coupon. They give you twenty. Yep. And so I got yeah, my really? G Fuel for thirty percent off. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I used the whole streamer too. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this one guy was doing a stream, and I, I, I popped in. I was like, hey. He's like, keep using my code. Use my code. Use my code. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, bro. 20% off. Yeah, hey. You to say. I would I would have used it. I, I popped in, like, right at the end of that stream, like, right as it was ending. So, like, I didn't. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I was actually telling G Fuel to, like, hit me up. We'll do a collab. And then <laughs> they, they fucking big timed me. So, well, okay. yeah, you know. <laughs> but then I read somewhere they were like, you need at least 10,000, um, like active viewers to uh to even pique their interest ah so not gonna happen <laughs> oh, man. hey you never know you absolutely never know right I, yeah fingers crossed <laughs> <laughs> hope springs eternal yep. oh, hey, uh, yeah. uh good afternoon guys question for me the main campaign would, could receive co-op gameplay in the future when the mod has been fully released. Kind of like the uh, experience series sample. We're not planning to manually add co-op if someone wants to take that on, sure. Yeah, co-op yeah, is it, a feature it, in the game, but uh, I don't know that we're going to see a campaign, a co-op campaign through. Uh, it's yeah, a lot it of work. Yeah, it would take some very serious redesigning yep. and also a lot of resources. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so if someone is eventually wants to do a mod for it, go right ahead, but this yeah. is being built with a player in mind. Yeah, definitely would be excited to see something like that, but I don't think that's our... Oh yeah, uh, for sure. That's our... That's our... Oh yeah. Some of the I elements, guess. too, in the campaign might get a little cramped uh, if there was a uh, co-op, too. I know yeah. that for a fact. Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, enough for the tool. I'm All gonna done. go ahead and... Yeah. Let's... All right. I already made it's it before the stream. Set. Yeah. It smells pretty good. It smells almost like a, um, like a lemonade kind of drink. Okay. Oh, I got that forward. Oh yeah, I got a big gulp. Oh wait, huh. you actually got it? Like oh yeah, oh yeah, mine came in. Yeah, mine came in yesterday. I came in yesterday and I was even careful to not... I, I didn't have any of it until right now. I'm going to take another swig. Oh. It doesn't sound like he hates it, folks. No, honestly, it's pre it's pretty good. Um, um, it's uh, it almost tastes like crushed up Smarties is how I would describe the flavor. Oh wow, that, yeah, that sounds really sweet. <laughs> oh, wait, hang on. Are you talking about American Smarties or can you probably talking about American Smarties? I'm not talking chocolate about Canadian flavor. Smarties because I have no idea what those okay, are. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, because like that'd be like chocolate hard coated. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. For us, there are these like little like uh, discs that are just like yeah. compressed, almost sour chocolate or almost sour candy. So those candy. are called rocket up here. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, not bad. Okay. Pretty good. All right. Nice. My money wasn't wasted. <laughs> no, I don't think so. If anything, I bought it for like that goofy cup that came with it. Uh, yeah. Right. That little pink. That Weird. cup does look fun. Yeah, I yeah, I, like, I don't know how crazy I am about the Duke design they put on it. Um, uh, but yeah. um, it's good. A critical point. Well, no, I just thought like I, I, Duke himself, like he just kind of looks a little off. Not Duke. Yeah, yeah. it's something about his face. There was some some speculation about. Uh, well, as always, if uh, that design was made by a human being or not, but who knows? Oh. Yeah, and I mean, no, uh, to be fair, it wouldn't be uh, out of the uh, wheelhouse of, uh, no, of G Fuel. No, no, would not be. But um, I, uh, I also will say, uh, when you get yours, uh, when you get your Star Nukem, the top of it, I had to like really press until it felt like I was almost kind of like break the lid to get it to snap closed the first time. And then after that first time, uh, it's worked just fine. So, and it was watertight, here. so that was the important thing too. Oh, good stuff. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wait being in Canada now. So, <laughs> <laughs> you guys look at um, the new live action Duke that they have for the oh, advertising yeah. of it. Yes, I I did. <laughs> That's a choice. What? That was a fucking dojo character. That was not dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It was yeah, something it was for sure. Was <laughs> the stand user could be anyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. That's so weird. What, okay, okay, here's a question. What would Duke stand be? Oh man. Would it be uh, like Megadeth? 
Yeah, but oh. we call it Mega Death. And... Is there a horror game Mega Death? No, there's uh, no. There might. Uh, I don't think so. As a JoJo aficionado, I know for a fact there is no Mega Death stand. <laughs> oh, no, that, that would be his. Yeah, it would, he'd it totally would have like death. sweating bullets as like his Mega or Death. Something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Okay. So. Huh. All right. Um. Uh... <laughs> okay. So. Um. I guess. Uh. First, what we'll do here. I have it open on my second screen. Yep. Let me just double check my notes for this part in particular. And. Um. Uh, Argo Rock, we kind of already talked about that in the beginning. Basically, um, we're going to be here no matter what. Uh, it, And as for like our team opinion of the ownership changing, I mean, look, it, it can't be worse than being with Embracer, right? Yeah. We don't really have like an official stance or anything like that because we wouldn't want to like, you know, I don't know, exactly, ostracize yeah. anybody or yeah. anything like that. No, no, no. We I mean, really just don't want to swat the horde at the next night, right? <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, no. I, I think everyone wants also uh, is okay with ostracizing Embracer, but other than that, yeah, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. Two K. Yeah. Oh boy. Two K can bring pain right now, so let's uh let's well, be we'll, nice we'll, to the... we'll see. We'll see what the future holds, but we're we're here. Yeah. Yeah. At least That's we what matters have the most. The Embracer didn't chase after us while they had it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, on, Anywho, on the map, we the always program. show to test stuff <laughs> off on here. Um, uh, well, we're going to show two different parts off. Uh, so, first we'll open up the, uh, just, uh, don't show it by date. Uh, just so I can show this off. I don't know that we've shown it off in a previous stream. I can't remember or not. But um, our code base, uh, we hadn't seen an update to our actual build ourselves in probably hmm, like a quarter or so. So one of mm -hmm. the big pushes this week was to try to uh, refresh a lot of that stuff. And with that came a lot of updates that we had been working on in the background. So one of those things, which is very cool, is the shotgun is fixed. So now, if you've got oh, a shotgun yeah. and uh, you've got an enemy on the other side of that glass, you don't have to worry about it. Actually works as intended. Yay! Huzzah! Looks really sharp. It's very satisfying. No more BS with um, uh, only being able to do it from super far away or anything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, especially in multiplayer, that was kind of... Uh pain <laughs> and then furthermore from there this one we may have shown off at least in clips somewhere but we have updated the chainsaw a little bit and we have restored some uh, uh, animations that weren't enabled before so now if you're running around with the chainsaw and you are not in range of somebody, Duke will swing the chainsaw. Nice. And then he will dig it into them. He will dig it into them once he gets close enough. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. And obviously everything is still a work in progress too. But we're definitely, definitely getting there. Um, oh, just cut that dude's head off? Yep. Yeah. Hell yeah. So something else that's uh, that was something that we were working on before, but it wasn't fully finished. Um, before, all the grunts had a little laser pointer that came out from them. This was uh, us testing to get the uh, the laser sight working for the uh, snipers. So that's been kind of tweaked, so you no longer have them with the little red dots sticking around everywhere. Die already. Um, and I'm trying to think, oh, something else kind of exciting, um, if we open up Booty Island, 
Boaty Island. I can give you uh, a side track for preparing the map, sir. It's all good. It's when all you good. get it later. Uh, JoJo's in the uh, live announcement chat. Ask if sounds is needed. Not this moment, but we'll definitely be announcing if there's any uh, openings in those departments in the Discord. So just stay tuned. Yep. Yeah. Any kind of any kind of other recruitment we're going to be doing is going to be the same thing it was for level design, and that everyone will get put posted out so people get the opportunity to apply if their uh, if their expertise meets our needs. Mm -hmm. So this for is sure. another fun little bit here. Um, uh, something else that's been broken since the leak here. Um, Sorry if you can hear my cup. Nah, You're good. You're good. People are talking about uh, Blood Death Wish in the chat. That's such an awesome mod. God, so good. I can't wait for this. And yet, episode. still in development, too. That's, that's, a, that's the part that I can close away is that it is actually in development. Oh, now they're not going to actually hit me. That's funny. Aww. So the turrets, I promise. There they go. <laughs> the turrets um, uh, actually fire straight now. Uh, you can actually you can Yay. see that they'll once they aim again aim at me again. Basically, they fire in volleys and then they re-rotate their weapon. <clears throat> Still not perfect, but um, uh, they actually stand a chance to hurt the player now. So. It's always cool to have the enemies have more functionality and be more threatening. Yeah, see, see them actually function a little, a little actually at all. Seeing as before, they were just um, yeah. uh, firing into the wall. Yep. So, still some tweaks to be done, probably, but they're actually functioning. Yeah, for sure. I love is 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 that like oil they're bleeding out technically? Yes. Yep. That's really funny. Uh, and folks in the, the live audience in the developer stream, if you have any uh, questions or you just want to say something, you can always raise your hand. I can bring you on stage for a few. But you can't see if I'm raising my hand. <laughs> You're already on the stage. Yeah. Um, is the oil on fire? Probably not. No, it's just a it's just a decal. Yeah, yeah. We're not we're not that immersive, Simi. <laughs> Well, yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. The... So yeah. All right, I guess with that, um, uh, we'll kind of move into working on what I was working on with Duke Burger. I'll show off a little bit of that and explain the process of what I was in the middle of there. So this came from just kind of a random conversation we were having. Um. Uh, it was just asking if we could implement it, and uh, it should be pretty easy. So the plan here, what we're going to work on, is um, uh, you're going to come into the Duke Burger, and all of the civilians here, or all the people who are working here, uh, something's going to be pretty off about them. And basically, um, uh, the second you kind of try to push past them, or they realize that uh, you've gotten into the back rooms here, they're going to turn around and uh, start attacking the player. So, yeah. originally I was going to try to spawn them in this way, but actually we're going to end up doing something different. Rizoni is asking in uh, in Twitch, will you guys introduce new weapons or alternate fire mode? We technically already have. Yeah. yeah. We have uh, a, a very work in progress, probably more experimental, uh, Dragon's Fire round for the shotgun at the moment. We're still kind of deciding if that's going to be in the game or not, but just as a cool experiment, see if we can do it. Yeah, we, we already have something like that active in the, in the game. Yep. And we also Sand technically have the Devastator, too, which is its own weapon as well. And then we do still have plans to add the uh, 
the the uh, the Ripper as well. Yeah. Will That's likely return? more in the future, though. Right. Will the expander return? Um, Are we hmm. allowed to talk about that? Uh, I would just say nothing's off the table. Yeah, like we're all, we're always talking about stuff. We're always talking about like you know, honoring the legacy of past Duke games and making sure that you know we're we have a very well rounded arsenal that's really fun to use. Mm. Um, yeah. Suspicious, yes. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that. Again, it is more that we are always talking about things. I mean, I will say that it's come to the conclusion. Sorry, go ahead. There's, there's possibly will come to the conclusion that, like, hey, we don't really have a use case of the expander. Like, if we we don't just want to have a weapon in game purely for fan service and not have it have like a reason to exist. If that makes sense. But yeah. the good news is that, like, hey, if we don't, you're going to have all the tools necessary to, like, make that yourself if you want to. Not to say that, like, that's just, just like, pawning off the, the, the labor intended on it, but it's more just, like, would having an expander align with our vision for the game and kind of what we want the game to be like and the combat scenarios we envision? Or will it just be there for the sake of people pointing and saying, I know what that is? Like, ooh, do 3D weapon, yeah. 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 It's just as much of a suspicious yes as it is a carefully said no. So. Exactly. Yeah. That's, That's a very long way to say exactly that. Yeah. Now, I have a question. For the Devastator, and this might be too <laughs> far, like, along. Is there a chance that the Devastator could have an alternate fire like the other weapons? I suppose there's a chance. I'm not sure what that would be. Yeah. But uh, uh, anything, yeah. I mean, they were definitely kind of going for that here, so we would definitely want to kind of try to continue that, the spirit of that. I'll figure something out. That would be phenomenal. <laughs> but what would the Devastator shoot for an alternate round? Like what? <laughs> a lock-on <laughs> mode, maybe? We could always modify the primary fire to be a bit slower or something, and, you know, something, something like that. Like, mini nukes. <laughs> yeah. Is Azamanga Dio Dio canon in the DNF Rest of Project Universe? Absolutely, Rambo. It is absolutely <laughs> canon. 100%. That happened. That's real. God, Jesus. <laughs> Grenade launcher for the Devastator. That could be interesting. Like, it just it changes the shots from being a straight from missile to being, like, bouncy grenades like the M16, that'd be interesting. Actually, technically, we totally could reference Azamanga Dio, because that series ended in 2002. So, just saying. <laughs> we could happen. It could happen. It could happen to you. It could happen to me. It could happen to any of us. It could be in the Azamanga <laughs> fans of this very chat. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Liquid, by the way, let me know if you need that model. Uh, I was supposed to send that over to you for uh, Duke Burger. I'm going to do that as soon as I get inside. You might have to refresh me, but... The the statue. You remember the statue that's out front of Duke Burger? Oh, Duke yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm going to send that to you. And don't worry, me and T-Monster already talked about it. We're... Cool. Osaka Resto Project? Absolutely. <laughs> oh god yo also I was thinking about this the other day um, Shrek came out in 2001 yep <laughs> throwing that Dude. out there <laughs> I'll just say I, I will just give a healthy reminder that Shrek was the very first model custom model imported into the yep. game yep oh was it? yes <laughs> not fully rigged but yes I think we have a folder Yes. I have no idea what's in there. Yes. It's confirmed. That's not oh. a careful no. It is confirmed. Do they Shrek not? <laughs> <laughs> Do they not I have snatched leggings? 
I guess the snatch don't have like they don't have snatch legs. I've never noticed that. I don't see any textures <laughs> here though. Uh, Slickface is asking if we have cheat codes in the NF. Yeah, we absolutely yeah. do. Just hit F12, God, Ghost. All the, the basic Unreal cheats work for uh, for DNF. Although it does, it really trips me up that in order to turn off Ghost, you just type Ghost again and not walk. Because years and years and years of playing UE-based games for consoles, it was ingrained in me. It's like, oh yeah, no, I just type in walk to go back to walking. But uh, it took me a while to get used to going, like, no, you just you just type Ghost again. Oh, it's because the Feels arms wrong. include the legs. That's what's I going know, on. I've always used to just type in Ghost again. But it, it, that never worked in, in Old Unreal. Like, that didn't I work in UT it. or Deus Ex or anything like that. I guess it's probably the engine trying to be a little bit more similar to others, where it's like a value thing of like That's, one yeah. to zero. Yeah, exactly. That's probably my thinking, too. Yeah, no, uh... God works, all ammo works, all those cheats work. In fact, I'm pretty sure we have that really awesome UI that uh, Earsten mm -hmm. made for us in the console. Uh, I know it's planned, but are we any close to having some tutorials for adding models, rigging, coding, etc.? De it's definitely on the table. It's just a matter of having people be able to sit down and like actually write all this stuff out. The problem is that we're still in a state of it. We're kind of building the runway as we're also building the plane at the same time. But hopefully by the time we ship episode one, we will have some good documentation that explains, you know, the functionality of the tools and engine and stuff that people can just pick up and get to work with. Because, yes, that is something we do care a lot about. And we know that a lot of people are sometimes frustrated that uh, they have questions that, Either people are too too busy, or they're working on things they can't answer immediately, and we'd like them to have like a source that they can just rely on, um, outside of just asking staff members. Because yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're humans too, right? We yeah. sometimes we're not there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like we're not bots that just like instantly answer every single question every single time. Yeah. Like one thing I'll notice, like, uh, fuck me if I if I pronounce his name wrong. Neophus, uh, he's been doing some really good mapping, and like I'll notice he'll he'll ping you every single time, like dude, like he, he pings you every time. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm happy to help answer. when I can, but yeah. yeah, you will always answer him. Yeah, it, it, sometimes it's right away, sometimes it's like five hours later. It's fine. You can ask. Yeah. It's just it'll take. It might take some time. We're all yeah. human. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so they're looking the part now. You helped them a lot. They're looking the part a lot better. <clears throat> I know they're all just the same guy right now. Uh, eventually, uh, we yeah, plan on yeah. having like. And they're also going to be invisible snatch too. What do you mean? Oh, aren't they going to be like invisible snatch where like you can't tell from the skin that they're snatched? Oh, no, no, no. The bit is is that you walk in and you can tell something is off, but they're not actually attacking you. And so they'll like say weird things and stuff like that to you when you talk to them, but otherwise they're not hostile. Okay. And then the second... So the idea is is that the second you either pass through back here, like you try to get into this area here, or you try to get in through the back wall, the back rooms... Or they realize you've gone into the back rooms, they start attacking. They become hostile. Okay. So it's kind the of like a. Uh... Sorry, go ahead. The only reason I was a bit confused is because I thought by by this point we'd have we we introduced the idea that like snatch can be can look 100 percent human but still be snatched and they can like kind of surprise the player. Because similar to that the bit we have in um, uh, Forgotten City. No, no. Yeah, with the, with the dragon, city. right? Yes. Forbidden City, yeah. Forbidden City, yeah. The internet is the way I wreck the back rooms work. Yeah, absolutely. When they're non-hostile, are they going to be treated as like a civilian death if you kill them? Yes. They lose ego? Yep. Sweet. Oh. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll have to they're talk about that, because I thought... Designs. 
Yeah, they'll definitely have to have a, a uniform for sure. Yes, yeah. uh, and I, I know the art team has been pretty eager to not only put Duke into alternative outfits, but we also still really like the idea of having the NPCs at different casinos and being in different outfits. So none of that stuff is off the table. Yeah. Right now, for I'm just sure. trying Absolutely. to kind of like demo this to make sure it works as intended, basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as having them visibly not snatched, I thought that was kind of part of the bit of this. Um, I may just be mistaken, and if that's the case, that's okay. <laughs> it's just temporary. Yeah. This is just but me I mean, setting it up exactly. and getting it working, anyways. So this is a proof of concept, yeah. exactly. Uh, okay. No, we the spot like that. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. To build, on, to build on that, I was wondering if, uh, like, if you did kill one of these guys. Um, you said that it was going to take away how, like, you just killed a civilian, and, and they'll stay passive, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the whole time. It's until you go to the back room. What if we made it so that if you kill one of them, they all, like, open up, and they all want to attack you now? Yeah, I can do that, too. Like, have, did you consider that? I can do that. Yeah. yeah. Let's see, from uh, uh, World's End. Yeah, because it's like, oh, no, it's like, oh, he's figuring us out. So they all just kind of, like, freak right. out and get ready to attack. That's, yeah. that's what I'm but I'm sorry, yeah, no. It looks, I love I love it so far. Yeah, I, I love the idea of playing with the player's expectations and, like, putting them in this, like, unsettling environments. Kind of having more than just your basic, like, action set piece, having a bit of, like, tension. Like, yeah, I mean, it's pretty clearly if, if you observe carefully what's going on, but, like, having that moment of doubt that's what we want to do. Yeah. Like, why is this guy giving me a spaghetti recipe? <laughs> We're in the middle of the crisis right now. <laughs> the most unexpected thing is to get Gus snatched. Oh, no. No, I not like Gus. Quick. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to fix something right now, but it's free to test if you want to check rooftops out. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you want to just send it to me in a DM, I'll download it after I'm done messing with this. Hell yeah. I can take a little longer if you want, and try to fix it down. This door is not going to be fixed anytime. I mean, you you've probably got at least like a half hour, or 45 minutes until I'm done doing this. You know what I mean? It's taking me a minute to set all this up, and I'm sure we'll get sidetracked. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. What were you saying though about the door? I'm sorry. Um, the one outside door on the rooftop, for some reason, when the merge was done, it broke. And it broke because of its paper points, so I'm going to try and uh, turn into the remover again instead, and see what we get from that. Because I know you turned it into a regular remover, because door movers were being finicky. I might have a way to make door movers work now. Ooh. Which is not a way, it's just fucking with it anyway. Because those doors that I made in the maintenance uh, area, those are by door movers. I just mess with them to make them work the way I wanted them to. Sounds good to me. Should be able to take like this one, this one, this mm-hmm. one. So, what have people been uh, been playing this month? Tried out Voices of the Void. It was pretty good. Ooh, what's that? Um, so essentially, you're like, um, you, you know those places like in the middle of nowhere that'll have a bunch of radar dishes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you work at one of those alone, and um, to give a brief premise, is you essentially ping locations. Uh, in, you know, space with the radars um, to find signals, anything, signs of alien life. But over time, the more things you ping, the more things start seemingly going weird. More things pop up on the radar around the base, stuff like that. You might have pinged somebody and they're silently visiting. 
That sounds hmm. good as hell. Yeah. It's very fun. I'll have to check that out. I started uh, playing Empire 4. What was that? Uh, I played the newest Age of Empire. Oh, nice! How was that? I'm like... It's not as, like... I don't know. It kind of doesn't have the same luster as the originals, but it still is very reminiscent, and the, the history that they give you is fucking full-fledged. Like, it's no longer just text on screen. They have, like, full 4K videos that show you, like, historical monuments and shit. And they yeah. give you, like, battle context and stuff. It's really in-depth with the with the history. And I love that, because I, I like history. <laughs> but, um... But, yeah, it, it does a good job of telling a story, but I don't think it holds the same uh, RTS value that it did back then. Uh, I, I totally get that. I, I remember hearing that, yeah, they put, like, a ton of work into, like, the more, like, almost documentary level, uh, like, explanations oh, yeah. of, like, here's why they did this, here's why this is like this, like, and that it stuff is super cool. It taught me how to make chainmail armor. Like, <laughs> Hell yeah, alright, <laughs> like, let's go. The game, in depth, with the, it, it is a very documentary-esque video. That's awesome. Uh, I see MacGyver mentioned they've been playing the Tomb Raider uh, 1, 2, 3 year master and Alone in the Dark. I'm assuming that's a new Alone in the Dark? Yeah. I, I'm actually one. really curious about that game. I really want to try it out. Oh, you really should. It's so good. Oh, that's that's really glad. I'm, I'm really glad to hear Alone in the Dark has gotten, like, even if it's, like, a 7 out of 10, that's still a W in my eyes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that that game, like what they were promising, like story wise and like tone wise, sounds like catnip to me. Like, I really need to check that out. Oh yeah, it's it's totally worth it. I I streamed it to my friends like a week ago. Mm -hmm. Everyone loved it because previously we did a playthrough of Alone in the Dark 2008. Hell yeah! Okay. Yeah, it was uh, it was an experience to say the least. I love that game. And really? and uh, and ironically, I'm a fan of that one. <laughs> I, that is the I think it had some very interesting systems. It was clearly a case of publisher meddling a bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, we we came to the same conclusion too that there was some awesome ideas. It was just that uh, there were obviously some external issues to take care of. They're trying to make a genre-defining masterpiece in a budget of about seven dollars with an engine built for racing games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, and generally if, if, if we figured, oh, okay, well, there's a new Alone in the Dark coming out, I guess we'll try that out. And we had such a great time with it that it, it, we basically, will, pretty much everybody in the call was going, this is my favorite survival horror game of the year. Holy crap, they did. Oh, hell yeah. That's really awesome to hear. Yeah. Oh. Uh. So many oh, good games coming out. I know, right? Oh. Um, yeah, actually, I'm actually cu really curious about those Tremaine remasters as well, because as someone who, even when they were contemporary, I appreciated Tremaine from a distance, because I never enjoyed playing them back then. I always felt they felt really clunky. I, I know that's not a very, like hot take at all, like, the Tomb Raider games are a bit clunky, but, like, hearing that there's new control systems in the remasters, even if apparently they're not 100% there, I do kind of want to give those a try, because I would love to play those games, and, uh, play them for the first time. I think playing through the original Tomb Raider games made, uh, Time to Kill much more endearing. Oh, yeah. See, like, I had no problem with Time to Kill control-wise. Like, that game feels fine to me. It's like the same controls, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Like I, that's that's why I'm, I'm I'm curious. Like why don't I like it in Tomb Raider, but I'm fine with it in Time to Kill? It's weird. There's a lot less action in, in Tomb Raider, but true. Yeah, a lot more like traversal based gameplay. Yeah. Uh, I was playing through Prey before slicing the tip off of my middle finger earlier this oof. month. So oof. It's impacted my play testing a little. It's the. Oh, uh, gee. Oh. Yeah, I was about to say. Middle finger uh, on my left hand, so my W, W, and S. Uh, oh! <laughs> but it's almost it's almost back to normal now. I got probably a a week left, and 
to be okay with it. Oh man, I'm glad to hear it because that is that sounds rough. Yeah, I was taking a rear end apart from my truck and didn't realize that like a so I had a bolt and nut and I was bracing it with that that same finger and then used an impact on the other side. It turns out there was a burr on the nut and it Ooh. just kind of you know that Oof. wins. Oof! So. No, no. <laughs> That's not okay. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, man. Oh, <laughs> <in the moment. laughs> but yeah, Prey was really good. Um, <laughs> was that Prey 2007 or Prey 2017? Uh, 20, yeah, 2017, 2018. Fuck yeah. Kind of yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, I'm trying to like 100% it as far as the achievements go. We'll see if I can if I can do that. It's, oh, There's a lot there. I... Yeah, I, I, I adore Prey 2017. Probably one of the one of the best games of like the PS4 Xbox One generation, I would say. It, it's really good. I it's... the only thing I would say I don't want to spoil too much. Of it, staring at me. The, the ending is a, a little disappointing. Okay. For... Did you wait until the yeah, end? Yeah, it worked as intended. I did. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I just feel like like even though it's a it's a you know, it's a promising, like, they could have built a sequel off of business. that ending. I feel like it invalidated the, the story. It That's so fair. Good. That's fair. Did like, you just say, you, oh, you got it working, Otacon? Sorry to interrupt, Chuck. Oh, no problem. Yep, I got it working as intended. Hell yeah. Kinda. Kinda <laughs> <laughs> awesome. uh. okay, like fix the door. You're not very hostile. That guy's even more getting involved. He's just like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Dude, what the? Came out of his throat. What's going on? All right, let me just walk away. And these guys. It's not perfect, but. <laughs> oh. His blood will say hello to you. <laughs> Has a proof of concept. Pretty fucking cool. <laughs> oh my god! Two of them! <laughs> I guess that dude's very special. He snatches the snatchers. <laughs> oh my god, that's great. I'm gonna focus on selling car insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Turning more into a Waffle House than a Duke Burger. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, this sort of situation would fit in a Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe that worked first try. <laughs> Hell yeah. That too. Um, okay, so let's see. Hate when snatched. Oh, can't I just turn them snatched from this? I swear I could. Are you going to play uh, Moon Crash, Chuck? Absolutely. Yeah, I started um, I started it and then got whooped pretty hard uh, on the first character. Oh, yeah. But, um, but I, I plan to keep at it. I'm, I'm not a big roguelike guy, even though I have like 60 plus hours in Caves of Cud. Um, I find that a lot of roguelikes kind of tend to kind of fall into a pattern of being getting really samey really quick for me. Like, I, I see through the seams way too fast, but... I hear you. Yeah. Moon Crash, when you do, like, Crash. figure out the puzzle, like, the, the greater puzzle at the core of the game, and get everyone out in one go, it feels so good. Like, mm -hmm. you just have complete mastery of the game's systems when you do that. It's so awesome. Like, I yeah. really loved Moon Crash. I saw some people comparing... Well, okay, not some people. I saw myself and others comparing uh, Ken Levine's new game a lot to what uh, Moon Crash does. Which one's that? Uh, he's doing Judas, which is... Hey, stop me for this before. What if there was a spaceship, but everyone on it was little off, was kind of fucked up? <laughs> <laughs> what if there was, like, say, a really charismatic antagonist, perhaps three of them, and it was, you know, just, just, just a little fucked up. <laughs> just a bit. What if it says something about society? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to give that a look. And yeah. that's a that's a roguelike too, or uh, it's not out to like I think twenty twenty five or something. But like there was oh, okay. there was some okay. recent previews for it. I'm, uh, I have strong feelings about Ken Levine's games. I, I used to, I mean, like it's weird. I. 
Irrational made amazing video games. There were some extremely talented people working there, and it's a shame that they were all led by Ken Levine. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because I am friends with someone who used to work at Irrational, and uh, oh. boy, do they have stories. Boy, oh boy. Boy. If you uh, if you ever want to like learn to hate a game you once loved, become friends with someone who worked on it. <laughs> It's one of those things I I try to I try to keep gaming entertaining. <laughs> sure, sure, absolutely. <laughs> no, no, no. That's totally yeah. fair. It's totally fair. Yeah, it's just. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I understand it's a hairy industry, especially. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Oh. It's just uh, you know I I want to enjoy yeah. the games that I want to enjoy kind of thing. No, for sure. And like even but... even like Infinite. I mean, Infinite is a triumph of like combat mechanics, of art design, of sound design, like. There were some incredibly, incredibly That's talented right. people working on those games, and they put their entire ass into what they were doing. And those, those people should be celebrated. I mean, sure. I, I cool. even know someone working on Judas, and I, I feel bad when I talk shit about their their boss around them. And yeah. then they're just like, but, uh, but hey, like, this element of the game is pretty cool, right? I'm like, oh, yeah, no, this game, this element of the game is, is awesome. Even from the standpoint of Ken Levine to be able to focus a team like that, you know, and, and yeah. not, not at any stretch trying to, to diminish what the team itself is doing or For um, sure. or what, you know, anything like that. But, but if he's able to consistently put out some pretty, uh, pretty amazing games, mm -hmm. again, not to not to cover over like whatever he's doing to his studio. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you got to at least acknowledge the talent he has there to, to focus that and to, to create no, for sure. those kind of products. Because, I mean, you've got, like, you know, 3D Realms, for instance, like a, a ton of talented people that, that just, they didn't have a lot of focus to it. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. The cycle continues. Hey, uh, uh, right? October. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you, remember how um, we were trying to figure out how to get rid of the inventory of the maid once you give her the pistol? Yep. Yeah. Gotta... Have you tried this trigger assigned pawn? Yeah, that's how we did it. That's, that's how we so... did it? Okay, cool, cool, cool. I just I just so... was like going through this and realized that this is how I was actually going to do what I was trying to do instead of using the NPC activity event. And I just noticed that wipe searchable items was one of the options they had. So yeah. I just wanted to... Uh, let me see if I can... Yeah, wipe searchable items, you need... It's zero and one. If you mark it one, in... it removes the content and that's what. Got it. So... As far as roguelikes go, I think probably the only one that I've really enjoyed was Streets of Rogue. I don't know if you've ever played that. It's like a, I think it was developed by one guy. Yeah, I, I definitely messed with that. It's fun. Almost the freedom of like the old Fallout, the isometric Fallout. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. The only problem like is when stuff map. goes wrong, it really goes wrong. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, you, I Bill. um. I'm just in love with Caves of Cud. It's it's just such a. Even though I feel like I'm stressed out when I play Caves of Cud because it's so like high stakes, and like you can die very 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 easily in that game. When you when I'm finished a session of it, I feel like I've done things in that game that I've never done in other games. Like the stories, I got. I sound like such like a like. An, an editorial article from like 2006 like the stories i tell my friends after the immersion gameplay of case of hud like but like they're really wild like they're really really wild what you can do in that game i i i adore it yeah i'm looking at it now it's it's, it's so cool like a very very strong learning curve but yeah it's it's incredible um I saw someone in chat mention they've been playing some Red Faction One and Two. That's Red Faction One is fantastic. Man, like I remember I spending a Faction ton of time one. in the multiplayer test for Red Faction. Yeah, it was so but, much fun. Yeah, Red Faction One is just like it's it's a great example of that post Half Life era of FPS design. Where like we weren't quite at like the completely linear design of like later games. Like there was still a little bit of freeform movement. 
that and like go a little more player expression. And I feel like Red Faction sits right in the middle of those two eras in like a really interesting way. Um, obviously, like there are parts of it I think that suffer for being like a what was it like a launch era PS2 game. Like it definitely came out like the first year of the PS2. But God, like it's just really satisfying playing that game. It it feels good to play that game. Yeah. I think the biggest disappointment of it was how kind of hamstrung the Geomod engine was yeah. for the consoles. Yeah, absolutely. And they, they pulled back the PC version. You know, like when you, you look at their test maps and stuff like that that they made within Geomod and what you could do with that with the demo, mm -hmm. and, and then you compare that to the, the full game of what, yeah. what you were actually able to to destroy. It kind of... Um, it yeah. didn't deliver, I guess I would say. The, the, the illusion falls apart really quickly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, the the sad part is that like it just feels like no one... Well, no, that's not true, because many of those games like Tearaway and stuff that absolutely do bring up that, like, the dream of Geomod. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, hey, can Even the, the glass... The way that the glass would explode and oh yeah is I mean, so satisfying. Between between that and the riot shield, it's like they watched the DNF trailer <laughs> and they're like, this, "This has to happen." Yeah. Although I, did did Red Faction come out before the the E3 2001? It came right. out after. Okay, so oh, okay. That might that might actually make sense. Who knows? Ever yeah. The secret of the games industry is that everyone's copying everyone else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no one is 100% original. And if you show an idea and then you're like another, you know, 10 years into releasing your game, it's your loss. Yeah. But... Yep. Or like go to GDC and you give a talk on something and then other developers are like, oh, I'll have some of that. Yeah. But I mean, that's 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 probably similar in like all creative industries, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What was it? Because um, a lot of people were thinking after Half Life, because of the trailer, they were thinking that the Snatchers were actually a weapon, like that little uh, what do they call those things? The little bugs you'd send out in Half Life, and they'd run. Oh, around. Snarks! Oh, Snarks! snarks. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone thought that those and 3D Realms was like, no, that's actually an enemy. Like no one had had like the the interactive fighting in first person with with an enemy, like grappling with an enemy like that. There before. we go. Yeah, no, it's uh another less jank. Look at that, another really doing cool. what they're supposed to. Hey. And they look proper and when people. I kill them they actually give me health. Awesome. Hell yeah. Oh, uh, frosty moon tips. Uh what you missed basically is us basically giving a statement saying that like we are here to stay no matter what the, the news says. Uh, or what what the news is, I should say, until we basically can't do this anymore, and then you the we also tried out the G Fuel Duke Nukem flavor, and we got a positive review on it, and then we're now trying to get this uh, this really cool proof of concept of a scenario where you go into a Duke Burger and everything is really off, and then Duke tries to go over the counter, and then everyone becomes hostile because they're all snatched. I think that pretty much covers it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just noticed the two faced pants in Liquid's kicking there. The yeah. He's got these <laughs> two tone jeans. <laughs> the Shea Gorath jeans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lava Jack. Okay, so now I should be able to set somewhere on here that they set off this other event if they die. Red Faction 2 is a uh, it's an interesting game because it feels like a like a very much like a reaction to reviews of Red Faction 1 in kind of both good and bad ways. I I, I remember playing that game, I played the PC version back when it came out and I thought it was okay, but people were just like savaging it in reviews at the time it's like it's not that bad it's not like a it's not a 50 percent game pc gamer this is like a 75 what game but i red, red faction 2 oh i do not like red faction 2 compared to the first one 
I played it on the original Xbox. It is not my jam. I do not like the combat yeah. nearly as much. Yeah, I, I haven't I played it since I was young, guys. though. So sorry. True. No, no. You, I I think that's totally valid. I think people have the exact same uh, criticisms. It's just like the the combat flow changed in a way that it did not feel as good. I will say like the art design refaction too is really cool. Like the way that this went for this like really like soviet like sci-fi yeah. look it's pretty neat honestly i can't remember if i played through it or if i just watched some videos of it i i don't blame you personally <laughs> played it but not knowing what red faction was not playing the original so just playing the first mission and not knowing you meant to like be able to destroy things oh yeah yeah everything off I mean, the only thing I played of Red Faction 2 was a demo on PS2 back then. Thought it was okay. Yeah, it, it's very much like an okay shooter. It's not, like, terrible, but it, and it has some cool moments, but, like, it definitely pales in comparison to Red Faction 1, especially because I remember a big, big, like, criticism the PC version has, they stripped out the multiplayer for the PC version, which was, like, weirdly common for a little while, that, like, the PC version would have no multiplayer for, like, certain games. Hmm. Slipgate says, yeah, uh, no, to talking about uh, Gorilla, which Red Faction Gorilla is one of the greatest games ever made. That, that's oh, yeah, a, I love Gorilla. So good. So good. Uh, Red Faction Army. I haven't played Red Faction Armageddon. That's one I never actually tried. I bought it, and I just never played it. I heard that Armageddon's pretty mid. Yeah, that, that that's pretty much what I heard. Is that like they, they took a game that was originally all about being outdoors and like fucking shit up, and then said, like, what if you're just in a cave the entire game, and you're fighting aliens? It's like, uh, <clears throat> what if I just played Dead Space instead? <laughs> like, I feel like with the added aliens, they jumped the, the shark, so to Yeah, say. yeah. I, I, I think that's a pretty universal opinion. Didn't yeah, like, they have aliens in the first one, though? Well, or, like, kind of, sort they of were mutant? mutants from nanotechnology. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> What is this fucking metal gear? Like, heck, even like the extent of <laughs> it Red Faction Two gear. again, with like the nano, the nanotech zombies and the super soldiers with those crazy red auras on them. Uh, like that was pushing it a little bit, but when they started adding aliens, that's when things get a little too much. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, it's like the Far Cry One problem, right? Where yeah. like. You're having all this fun fighting these really intelligent human enemies that are just like really goofy and their voice acting is really funny because they're just yelling the most like benign things. <laughs> they had the, the mercenaries in Far Cry 1 were just a bunch of doofuses. They're so goofy. And then like the weird ape monsters show up and they're just like, I'm not having fun anymore. I'm just dying yeah. over and over again. Yeah, because you just called the immediate moment I stopped playing that game. Yep. Yeah. The, the Trigon. <laughs> I feel they're a good idea, but they were executed horribly. Because and then, it's like someone accidentally added an extra zero to every single one of those characters hit points. This should oh, basically, yeah. yeah. Tries are just too damn tough, too damn fast, they hit too hard. <laughs> Smoke too insane. different, bitch too bad. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. Mm. It's just... And Far Cry never went there again. Which I think is a shame, because I feel, even though people fucking hate the Trigen, I feel they kind of gave a, a bit of a personality to the game. Like, well, then they did it with, tried doing it with Crisis, and then the same thing happened. There was, like, you're having all these fun playing. Yeah, it's, as Salento says, Crisis is a problem with alien enemies in general. Like, yeah, exactly. Trigens and the Ceph. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the weird thing about, like, early day Crytek, is that they always fucked up the four fantastical enemy types. Yeah. When it comes to, like, human scale stuff, it's amazing. I love blowing away the Norks in, uh, in Crisis. It's awesome. Sorry. But when you get I to this, Seth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, man. <clears throat> yeah. Far Cry VR. Oh, there is a mod for that, isn't there? Is there? Um, this is also an official game, but you have to go to one of those, like, physical VR arcade locations to play it. Yeah. Oh, I man. played through it. It wasn't, wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. I like that um, 
because VR games with guns have the problem of like you don't really feel like you're holding it, so it's very awkward to yeah. like air gun a big rifle. Looks so like instead, hot dogs. They, just, they give you a big VR controller that is just a gun. Ooh, yeah, I've seen. Um, them. They're, they're pretty cool. And I, I love the detail that. Because the AK did not match exactly the shape of how the gun felt, they just like bolted an extra hand guard to the front of it, mm -hmm. so that it would line up with like what you're feeling to what you're seeing. Yeah, that's that's awesome. <laughs> I I need to mess with VR more. Like my my head's just been just gathering dust since. Uh... University started really kicking my teeth in. I feel bad because, like, I was all about it before school, but now because it just it takes just a few more seconds more than just pushing play on Steam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The best thing that came out Far Cry was one source code getting leaked. Yep. <laughs> just man, when I found out about that, I was so happy. Yeah. Um. For me, though, I've been playing, well, I mean, Case of Cut, obviously, uh, but I've also, I also finished the Doom Eternal DLC, finally. So, when Doom right. Eternal came out, I was very ambivalent on it. Like, I liked it, but I also was just like, I don't enjoy playing it, because I was so exhausted by it, because I was forcing myself to play it on, like, Ultra Violence, because oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dumbass. Mm -hmm. Um... Mm -hmm. So this time around, I said, you know what? I just want to go through the, the campaign again and pick up the collectibles I missed and like get all the shit I didn't get the first time. Just play it on, on easy. And look, I don't care if it makes me a, 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 a babby gamer, but like, I had way more fun playing that game on easy than I ever did on Ultraviolence because it, it's, <laughs> it's just hard enough for me that if I stop paying attention, I will die. So I have to constantly pay attention but not to a level where I'm literally exhausting myself from constantly keeping track of things. So, like, I have a way more fun. So then I finished the campaign uh, for the second time around. Then I did the DLC. And the DLC is really, really good. Like, I had a lot of fun with that DLC. Uh, the first one has some, like, fantastic, like, level design in it. And I like the way they start introducing mon uh, monsters that, like, require specific attachments to, like, alter the flow. But then the second the one... Oh, sorry. The DLC released during COVID, so it's kind of a miracle that it came out as well as it did. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. No, Doom Eternal is, is like... It's, it's incredible it came out, and it was this that good. Um, yeah. But Ancient Gods 2 was fucking fantastic. Like, when I played that, I kind of just, like, completely went around to be like, no, Doom Eternal, like, kicks ass, actually. This is great. I'm, I'm loving this. And then, like, I got to, like, the final bit of, of The Ancient Gods 2 with, like, that part where... I'm not gonna spoil it, but a bunch of really cool shit happens in the opening to, like, one certain level. And I was literally just, like, like cheering in, in real life going like hell yeah like this is what i wanted i wanted this kind of scale this these kinds of stakes the entire game and it was great like i, I know people weren't happy about like the boss fight and i'm sure on harder difficulties that boss is like a pain in the ass because he really kicking my ass on even on easy but yeah um if any of you are, are haven't tried ancient gods and you love and you like really like Doom Eternal's campaign, absolutely play it. It's really good. And also the Sentinel Hammer is so awesome. Like oh, yeah. solid ending, honestly. Oh, solid yeah. ending. I like the ending itself was a bit abrupt, but I liked where it was going and what it meant. It also meant like, hey, okay, it's software. The next game is not just gonna be another one of these. It's gonna be something different. Like a possibly yeah. first, first person shooter, obviously, but like it won't be another Doom game. Which... It essentially sets, like, yeah, exactly what you said. It, it just shuts down what it, like, I don't know how to word it. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it ends the arc. It. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. That's it. Yeah. And, like, especially in, 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 in a medium, well, not just this medium, but it feels like all mediums nowadays, 
are so afraid to definitively end things. It was so refreshing to have a game just go like, nope, that's it. That's yeah. it. You, you've had the story that we intended for this. You and it was it. great. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then I've been, so been, been playing like just like a bunch of stuff. I uh been playing through 3D maps and mods, obviously. Uh I recently tried out one mod one map in particular that was like really cool, it was all about like shifting between dimensions in a house that was like depending on what dimension you were in, you could impact certain things. Like it got it got a bit tedious, but I love the concept of it. Problem is like, it requires like a really old version of E to even like run properly because it relies on so many like very like edge hacks. Um, I'm trying to remember what the name of it was. I think it was like Dimensional Shift or something was the name of the map. Really neat. Really neat map. Um, almost finished the Rise of Triad final episode. The the new one they added, which was is super, super fun. And then um, I've been playing King's Quest 2015 as like a, a palette cleanser. And that game's fantastic. It's really fun. Just... I've been up some games lately. It's been, uh, I've been playing the Ghostbusters remaster. Oh, nice. Yeah, that. I don't know if any of you guys have uh, played a game called Nocturne. Oh, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nocturne, look, the guys that made Nocturne. Yep. Are some made of a Ghostbusters. Yeah. Dudes ever. Yep. Like, yeah, Terminal they Reality. Over, over and over and over. They yep. fucked so over. Left, right, and center. No, it sucks. Yep. Oh. I hope that they can buy the rights to Nocturne, because I know Nocturne was their baby. I hope they can... I think Nocturne nowadays would work really well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Nocturne would, like, especially if you made it like an RE2 make situation, like, oh my God. that game would do amazingly well. I mean, I know in the current state of the industry, I don't think that they're gonna have that fun with how I'm doing that, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I think... I, I always loved Nocturne, even back when it came out. Like, it was it janky? Yes. Was it, like, unfair at times? Yes. But, like, the mood and ambiance of that game was sublime. Incredible stuff. It, it like it looked incredible when it came out too. Oh yeah, it, it stole the show when it, it showed up on E three. People were going crazy for that, and yeah. then just for some reason, it just didn't sell well. Yeah, I still admire the gall of tying their universe to fucking Blair Witch that they did yeah. back then with Blair Witch uh, Episode One, which was a really good game. <laughs> oh yeah, Blair Witch One was pretty awesome. Yeah, we don't talk about you and Not so much. I, I thought 3 was okay. 2 is the worst one, because 2, they had, like, what? 2 had Civil War, so you shooting Civil War soldiers for half of it. They had, like, a three-month dev cycle on the second one, I think. Yep. Which, was that like, rough? And you can tell. You, you cannot ship a game in three months. No. You can't do that, and they did it anyway, which, like, Hey, kudos to uh, to Human Head for pulling that off, but wow. Human Head is another studio that got fucked over left, right, and center console. Oh god, yeah. And using a, such an ancient engine as, uh, <laughs> as the. Uh, what was it? Well, it was the Nocturne Tech. Yeah, it was Nocturne Tech. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I, I thought the, the third episode was okay, the ritual developed one. I mean, I've oh, always, yeah, I have always loved Rituals games. Yeah, Rituals stuff is always been pretty solid. Yeah, rest in peace, Ritual. Uh, yeah, another studio consistently fucked over and put into a death spiral. So, <laughs> oh. Okay. I, I, wi I wish so badly to see what Sin 2 could have been. I mean, Night Dive has the rights. That's true. You never it know. It could happen. It could happen. I mean, that uh, that Sin remake does really well whenever it comes out, and you never know. They 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 literally have everything they need to do Sin two if they wanted to. Yeah, I mean, heck, we even have John R. Blade coming back for uh, Phantom Fury. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know how involved John is, but he's there. Yeah, 
we'll see. I, I, I'm still really excited for that game. I mean, I, I hope that uh, I know it's been getting some criticism online, which seems like a lot of it is quite valid. Uh, but like, I hope that team pulls it off. I truly do. It's, it would be really cool if that game was as good as it looks it could be, if that makes sense. Yeah, I have I remember I played the demo for the Steam Fest, and I was so yeah. excited. I played yeah. it, and I was thoroughly disappointed because I kept on looking at the trailers beforehand. I was like, oh my god, this is going to be awesome. It's going to be like the second coming of the immersive FPS. Oh, you're going to it. Okay. Gonna be great, and then I play it, and it's like I'm playing the 2015 Unity demo. Like you know the ones from like itch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, and absolutely. Those ones. Yeah, and it, it sounds like the team was not happy with that demo either, based oh. on like what the the conversations have been around the past couple weeks, that uh, they weren't happy with the state of it either. So I'm I'm really hoping because apparently. The, the newest builds are like day and night compared in like in quality so but we'll see I mean that game comes out in what three weeks four weeks yes it's very close very very which is close. um a bit scary to be honest yeah, yeah is the volume low for everyone else or is it me um uh, the game's volume is purposely a little lower just so that uh, people's voices don't get drowned out by like air sirens and gunfire and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I forgot to hide the uh, trigger sand phone on top of yeah, the machine. Yeah, it's okay. Whoops. Whoops. How could you, October? So How basically, look at it. this is the further revamp of, uh, or the continued revamp of the penthouse. You can see the fire uh, creeping in on you had uh, kind of a new effect there. Uh, it was a little more full-bodied as well. Yeah, kind of like pushing the player into a Time certain direction. <laughs> Need to add some more to it. Soda yeah. machine here. That's always work in progress. Oh. On oh. now stream. Okay. Okay. No, we're good. We're good. Yeah, Fan of Fury comes out in three weeks, April twenty third. Yeah, I I hope that team pulls it off. Oh. Uh oh. Right. Uh -oh. That's uh -oh. the oh, that's the thing I was trying to mess with. Remember when I told you? Mm-hmm. I need to specific up with that. <laughs> tube monster. Oh, yeah, that's that, tube monster. That's new the new enemy. enemy. <laughs> NDA <laughs> broken. Quickly, we have to shut down the stream. <laughs> I did set myself up an oh shit button now, so if something bad does happen, <laughs> I can dump the stream. Hmm bit of a change here so you can see like a security system has kind of been enabled into the the kitchen here to try to contain the fire that's why she's stuck in there it's not comical fire anymore it's the oven again yeah this this redesign is really cool i uh I've had the privilege it, it of came running in my through mind five minutes. What's that? Was this working? It came in the mind five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Love that. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that I need to eventually finish. I need to finish. That's still a work in progress. Some gigantic yeah. degree. Yeah. Every, like every everything. In, though. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. And it should be noted here. that the path that Otacon is taking right now is, like, you're not required to take this path. You can just go straight into the dumb raider if you want. Love that so something we care a lot about is that trying to offer, like, Maybe not alternative paths, but like little like side routes the player can go through and like maybe like still end up in the same area, but like go a different route, you know what I mean? We've seen nothing yet. Just add a little bit of flavor to everything. Ooh, that's some bad flickering. No. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. We have a texture issue with the snatch. 
that's actually been fixed. It's just they're not, they're, the wrong, the wrong, ooh, the wrong one is being spawned. Oh no! Oh my goodness! You okay here, buddy? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Running around <laughs> at the speed of sound. Oh, he's in the corner. <laughs> uh, speaking of Blair Witch, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love AI. Oh, I love so... Look, he merged references. This is just what temporary. Is the uh, the pool table will be sense. back. It's just temporarily yes. removed. And the cabinets too. Yep. Yeah. Did you fix this yet, though? Nope. They fixed what? Sure didn't fix that yet. Did you walk under the table? You'll see. Oh, no. oh, you mean the vent? Yeah, no, I haven't messed with that. I focus on brush tops. No, I get it. And as you'll see, going down here, no load you screen. Wanna touch it, don't you? How about that? Find the levels. Hell yeah. Stand down. I need to open up the hole. Again, she's going to have different dialogue here. She's not actually going to say that because yep. it wouldn't make sense. Because she's not giving you the yeah. gun anymore. Yeah, there'll, there'll be alternate takes based on like, what you did in the previous uh, area. She'll give you the gun if you didn't grab the gun. Yeah. So there's going to be that specific uh, prediction yeah, so in this case. Oh, nice. You fixed that one so it shatters. Gun. Nice. Hell, yes. Someone says that the first slice build is like budget software compared to this so far, and uh, thank you for the compliment. We've been working really hard on uh, redesigning all of Chapter 1 to meet our standards, because we're really happy with how the first slice turned out, and we're really glad that we shipped it, but like we knew that we could improve on it. We knew that we could add more exciting gameplay and scenarios to, uh, to what we shipped. We'll eventually have to source these guys. This is just here with the only eight enemies I want to actually be in this room. But not in this way. Mm -hmm. I still think we gotta get Gianni to re record the uh, the same oh, side. Change that line to I'm on your side. Not the same I... side is also fine. Yeah, the, but oh, I'm on oh. your side is a classic Die Hard phrase. It's mm. like the perfect opening for that reference. That's true. That's fair. Did this get raised? Oh, no. oh my god! I thought he was... just full. No, 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 no. I thought he did, but he only, he only touched like the lip of the balcony. There we go. I feel like that guy moved. I think my... It feels lower than it's meant to be. That's I think it's higher, higher than it's meant to be. Yeah. be. Oh, look into that. I think I know why. Live demo. <laughs> hey, you fixed that guy. And gorgeous. And you fix that. Hell yeah. Once again, no so we changed and moved the placement of the M16. Now you pick it up off this dead EDF soldier. That's on the ground. Ignore the floating stuff above. Ignore the floating stuff. I'm focusing on it. I'm staring right at it, October. I'm making the bats noise on all your other floating dev materials. <laughs> yeah, shotguns It'll be now. nice. It'll be nice to see W4s. Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I changed those eventually in this part. Oh, yeah, yeah that's w4 something is we're not quite ready to show off yet, but... Yeah. yeah, but some really, really cool behind the scenes stuff with it that uh, we got cooking rare. in that regard. Sometimes I even amaze myself. Definitely should help make the AI feel a little more uh, reactive. Yeah. I need I need to get the antenna dish to actually trigger at a much higher angle than it does now. Because it didn't trigger for you right now. Give it a look. Yeah. I'll remove the boxes too. I'm gonna recontextualize them. Based on what we discussed before about aiming bodies. 
Uh, the EDF have shotguns. Uh, yeah, I believe that is. The EDF have shotguns on harder difficulties, Ooh. not on this difficulty. Yeah, yeah. Shotguns can melt. Yeah. I've got a great idea that we won't have any balancing issues. The Devastator EDF. <laughs> <laughs> At the very end. Killing the final boss to be proton or negative. But nope, just a single EDF of the Devastator. You thought that Trigen would kill you. <laughs> Stand still, Dennis. Yeah, the the jumping soldiers. That's um, that's a, just an AI quirk we're still ironing out. Like, because we want them to be able to like do stuff the player can do, like jump on objects and stuff. But it's still a work in progress. No worries, bud. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, quick yeah, ones. Take it easy. Take care. Back to the scars from Unreal. Hopefully not that smart, because <laughs> uh, uh, fighting the scar in Unreal is annoying. <laughs> like, so it's really cool what they did with it, but hey. One thing that has been shown there is that you're being teased with the easy vending machine, but that's not actually operational here, because it's been broken. You still have the circuit vending machines, which for clarity, since that's not really been shown before, those are gonna give you healing drinks, in general. So you can uh, pick a product, it's gonna be deployed, you can drink it, kind of like you would do it. It didn't defense. trigger properly, but it's okay. My frame rate's getting chunky. You ain't wanna live forever. Ooh, what's that? Also, I did I did test that change to the uh, particle system, and it did fix that October. So you should nice. be able to just have it be on and off now without having to have extra trigger logic. Look at those flame jets. That pain in the ass to get them to work without the audio of constantly being on. <laughs> oh, that's why it's higher. Uh, I saw it, you didn't. That's okay. Blown them away. Yeah, it definitely would have back in 2001. Would have put every game developer's head down at the same time <laughs> if they saw this. Like, we'll never be this good. Well, I mean, maybe Kojima would be. Oh, uh, Koji. No, Kojima is Kojima. <laughs> I, I, listen. I love Digital Prayer, but you put it next to M MGS2. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weird to think they're the same time, huh? Right? <clears throat> Let's see if it works. Oh, this one doesn't work. Oh, yeah, this one, that, this one up here is not configured yet, but the one in. Uh, if you want to show off the one in. Uh, the foyer, yeah, you can. Oh yeah, well. The elevator is not gonna move yet, because that's not configured to yet. That's okay. I still feel like we need to figure out some way. I, I think the average player. New oh no, that's already been done. I know what you're about to say. Uh, you're put directly in the direct. Okay, so, all right. Liquid dental that there. Okay. Oh yeah, we'll pull that off. I haven't seen that off. in the newest build. I love this part. Yeah. The guy's literally waiting for you as you come out. I love that. Should we make it so that it's a bit less uh, oppressive? Uh, they still didn't. The final battle still didn't trigger fully. That's okay. Well, the, I'll, it's, that's... Yeah, I haven't messed with that yet. Yeah, that's okay. Cool. I he triggered, which is an important one, but... All the lights, it's probably been one of those uh, places where can you mess it. All the light yeah. sources are not precious anymore. 
and the fact you cannot tell is important. Right. You just expect it to be. And then we haven't added the study yet, so. Yeah. No, there's a chunk of study you can show, but that's the one that is a. Uh, yeah, important. right. Oh, and really quick, let me show off the, uh, the soda machine. Which is... This feels like a half life half a few combined together in terms of graphics. Yeah, I can see that. It's like, it's like a half step, or even like a, like a quarter step between half life 1 and half life 2. Give me it's some of that like half classic. <laughs> Watch it, let's see if it breaks live. I've used this so many times. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not. Uh, oh. It's uh, so it's only going. It's currently configured. Want to give you one product for uh, auction? There's an audio cue that is missing, and I select you troubleshoot. Why sometimes it just doesn't deploy the product? Hey, with the there we go. Deployed. It deployed some. Oh, it's deployed. But it works otherwise. Maybe it was only a certain one deployed it? No, it's just... Uh, I don't... Know. It's just not perfect. That's okay. Just to get the idea. It does function when it works properly. <laughs> it is cool. I thought at first it was dispatching earthquakes. <laughs> <laughs> Push it and the whole thing was rumbling. That's the earthquake machine everyone talks about. <laughs> but yeah, so we still have uh we're we're really close to being wrapped up with the penthouse merge. Um yep. uh just a handful of more things to really continue to work on and hammer out. Um with that, I think I'm gonna get up, use the restroom really fast, and then I'll come back and we'll start looking at Lady Killer. I already have some notes of things I want to try to clean up, so we'll uh, we'll start working on that. I will. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll go back to standby uh, screen. Do you guys want me to leave mics live? Or do you guys want me just to put on some music temporarily? No more than like a five minute break. So I'm good with whatever. Okay. Me too, man. I could talk forever, so. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll put on the standby yeah. screen temporarily. I'll leave the mics live for you folks. And uh, otherwise, I will be back here very shortly. Nice. Get up and get a stretch, get a snack, get a drink, whatever you need. That's probably what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm just, just doing stretches right now. Yeah, <laughs> glad everyone here is uh, liking what we got to show off so far. We're uh, we're really proud of the work that uh, we've gotten done. And uh, like like I said, like I know we sometimes got people being like, "Well, all you show is episode is, is chapter one." It's like we're still working on other stuff. We're just not ready to show it yet. Because I mean, like if we showed everything we have in production, then there wouldn't really be like surprises or you know. Yeah. big things that you didn't see coming you know what i mean so like eventually we'll get to a point where chapter one is a hundred percent locked down a hundred percent done and that that point is coming sooner than you think and then chapter two yeah and then chapter three and then chapter four and then chapter five and then episode one is complete and we'll get there yeah some time. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of being a, a fan project with, like, no financial stakes associated with it. Like, we can really just take our time with things. We can build up our, yeah. build up the tech, build up the knowledge, you know, build up our tools and if just... Any, yeah, if there's anything Duke fans can do, it's wait. <laughs> True. <laughs> and be disappointed. <laughs> Shit, this... It, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, the the G fuel was good, so true, true. That that that's a W. Yeah, right. I can't wait till mine gets here like next week, probably because oh, it's shipping to Canada. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not even. When I heard Liquid describe it as a like crushed up Smarties in a can, I could almost feel my teeth dissolving over over the <laughs> wall. Yep. It's like, oh man. 
so the entire brew is radioactive. That's why the Jaya Jaya. is the brand. The mushroom uh, cloud is a warning, not an invitation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's funny to like think about that being the flavor because I did that in school once and I got sent home because they thought I was putting drugs in my water. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh it's my just God. parties. Like, you it's gave them party. to me. Oh my God. I just want the water to be multicolored. Yeah. Which is essentially all I wanted and got sent home over it. Oh my God. That's so goofy. That does suck, bro. That's awful. I mean, on the <laughs> loose topic of drugs, when I was in high school, uh, we did have an individual try and snort, uh, snort salt pretzel, like pretzel salt up his nose, and boy, was that glorious. Ow! Yeah, I've, I've never never seen anything like that, and I don't expect to again, but... Ow! Ooh. I'm just I'm just thinking of how much that would burn. <laughs> From Jesus. his expression, a lot. Yeah! No <laughs> kidding! Just clearing out the sinuses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Clear out the sinuses yeah. by burning them off. Yeah, right. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and I'm with you, dude. Jesus. <laughs> I mean the only the only no story I have is that when I was a kid I shut the Lego hand up my nose and my parents were like, Oh my god, go to the hospital and then no. Nah, it just came out on its own. That's I the watched the scenario. I watched a kid sell oregano to another kid. <laughs> that was awesome. It's like the Offspring song. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I've been listening to a lot of Offspring lately. Like, Offspring is still really good. They're pretty, yeah, they're underrated, bro. Like, Smash, Ixnay, Americana, like, really, really good albums. Ignition, also really good. Bangers. And I mean, look, Dexter Holland, I, I I could not say a single bad thing about that man. I mean, listen, the dude has like not only fronted an incredibly fun like pop punk band, but also like has a PhD in like oh God, what was it? Like neurobiology or something? Like he did. He apparently put out a paper that helped in assisting the development of the COVID nineteen vaccine. No. Oh. So you know something small like that. Dexter Holland. Hmm. Uh, molecular molecular biology is what he has a PhD in. That lead singer of the Offspring has a PhD in molecular biology. That is awesome. His thesis was the discovery of mature microRNA sequences within the protein coding regions of global HIV-1 genomes, predictions of novel mechanisms for viral infection and pathogenicity. That dude's smart. And wow. he followed the money to become a rock star. No, this is after. This <laughs> oh, is after, after really? he was a rock no star. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is in 2017 he got his PhD. That's impressive. Wow. Yeah. yeah right? Damn. Like, you just kind of like, hey, you know what? Take a break from this, like, incredibly lucrative, like, punk rock band and just go get a PhD. <laughs> you know, why not? And it also has some really good hot sauce, too. <laughs> he makes hot sauce? Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. He does everything. Gringo Bandito is apparently his hot sauce. I think I tried it once, and like, it's it's all right. I mean, I'm not really like a yeah. big hot sauce guy, but like, I remember tasting it like this is not terrible. <laughs> oh man, is it like spicy? I think so. Yeah, I don't know how many like Scovilles it is or whatever, but like, mm. it's, it's apparently like a uh, tapito. Tapito, or however you pronounce that. Hmm. Uh, Gringo. <laughs> uh, Sounds pretty lit, though. I want to try 120 it. 120 
SHU. So Scoville heat, heat units. Hmm. That's nothing. Yeah, apparently it's like really well regarded. Heat Sounds three weird. out of five, flavor four out of five, value five out of five, overall rating four out of five. Nice. Yeah, so like uh, like Frosted Moon Tip says, Giga Brain shit. Giga Brain shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we're here trying, like, struggling to hold together like four university classes. <laughs> I guess when you make all that money and all the all the music, you can just go and, you know. Oh yeah, no, for sure. I'm sure he gets like royalties to this day. Like he is probably set for life. At least oh, I would hope so. Bad. I, I would hope so. Like, depends on the standard of living he's got. You know. Yeah, exactly. Right. It depends on the contract. Like how many limos into how many pools per week? You know, <laughs> might not be able to sustain that. Yeah, unless he's living very humbly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's only got one yacht. You know, he's he's exactly. uh, he, he's got he has a poverty lifestyle. <laughs> I met one of the guys that was, uh, he was staff, he was IT staff on one of Bill Gates's yachts. What? And so he, yeah, right? Like they had a, That's a dream. it was two racks worth of servers on there, and he had to stay on the yacht, and then Bill Gates would just like, you know, fly out on a helicopter, land on said yacht, do his thing. But like, he was doing IT on this yacht pretty much perpetually unless he had to you know go to another yacht or whatever but it's amazing Ooh. that they like you talk about standard of living y you know the higher that goes the more you have to employ just to maintain standard of living i'm looking at the terms of service and just nodding <laughs> <laughs> like yes mm -hmm. okay <laughs> yeah what do i sign <laughs> All right, let's yeah. do this. Nice. <laughs> Anything specific that uh, you need to tell me when it comes to what you saw, or stuff that they already saw? That I need to change? Okay, actually, the tennis Scott. court part, I think, the tennis court part is probably something you should uh, look at yourself eventually. Yeah, the, ten the tennis court fight, and then the ending of the... Uh... Actually... The I think I know I can we can potentially so. address the whole petrol event issue. And we're going to have to structure them a bit better. Specifically, currently the petrol events for the tennis area, as in both the dropship and tennis area, point to a direction and account for the EDF to basically make up for that path based on what they have. Mm -hmm. I think we need to handhold them through the paths. How I fixed it the first time, um is i set the uh i just um because the patrol for when they get out of the uh drop ship was set to have them like go to a back corner and then go to their position and i believe i fixed it by just having them go to the cover points instead of even dealing with the patrol if they go straight to the cover points to get ready for duke it's less jank mm. the way you want to try at least Eventually, is just add that additional step, which is going through the path node that is uh, outside the ship, and then uh, leading directly into uh, the zones they're meant to cover at, I guess. And the same, I should try for the tennis court. That's unfortunately a uh, pain. Not that much pain. Just no. Pain. Yeah. Just like a two out of five pain. Okay, there's much pain right. around right now. <laughs> I want to figure out what's out here. They have stuff out here outside the map they were working on. We're going to figure out what that is. It's uh, probably that just stuff maybe. that's in other rooms, but I want to know. Yeah, it might be stuff they were building on the well, I want to know what this is, because yeah. this almost reminds me of the... Um, this The way this was set up originally when I first saw it, I thought it was the stay tuned thing. Hmm. Hold button one, hold button three. 
hold button for. Oh, this is video poker. Oh, okay. They were trying to add strip. Okay, they were trying to add slot machines in. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, obviously, we're back, everybody. Howdy. Uh, and we're very carefully going to uh, kind of stick Willie. <laughs> we are risking it all. <clears throat> Look at that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> It'll take a second for the video to catch up, but that's funny. Just The placing of that EDF is just hilarious. <laughs> okay. So I've got a little um, cheat sheet for myself. Um, so, of things that really need to be cleaned up in here. So, the first thing we're going to do is, I think we're going to select all these EDF friends, which is only two of them, and we're going to remove their weapons. And I'm also going to disable their voice. And I'm going to disable their voice because, well, I'll just start the level and you'll know immediately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yup. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Anyone see anything? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no gun, I must scream. How will you scream with no voice? <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Oh, they're not doing it a whole bunch. Anyways, last time when I was playtesting this the first time to come up with things that needed to be adjusted, the all I heard the entire time was lock and load people, lock and load people, yep, lock yeah. and load people. Yep, yep. So we're gonna we're gonna. Ooh, fix are you that. playing the crater? Huh? Nine EDF soldiers doing that. Are you playing the crater? The crater. Come on, ADPC, back me up. What's the uh -huh. crater? What did I miss? Crater. Crater. Oh, ADPC, you haven't seen uh, the Phantom Fury Crater no. show? Oh, the Crater. No, no comment. Budget slick, well. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I wish I, them all the best with their passion that. project, and that is yes, as far as, as is what I will say about that. I wish them the best with their passion project. Just I as hope I they hope. Succeed. In the worst case, it'll be at least entertaining to watch playthroughs on. Uh huh. I think it's just it's with the knowledge that we have. I think it's just funny to look at the uh, and I notes. don't disagree. Yes. Mm -hmm. Knowing what we know, it is very funny. I agree. <laughs> or not even funny. It's just very obvious knowing what we know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's fixed. NPC they no, they no longer have their weapons, and they should no longer say lock and load people. Um, thank fuck. Question though, should should that should that I mean, you know, the probably the EDF is a placeholder for someone else, but should that be like a different kind of guard? Like, could that be like a civilian with a weapon? Um, I suppose it could be. We would have to make a security head, guard instead of the EDF. I think that's probably yeah. why. Yeah, it's got that bouncer. Yeah. The elevator too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have yeah. a bouncer there. You're right. Yeah. So in my head, like the EDF invade. The EDF aren't there there already, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, or maybe well, they well, are we, there, we, and we that's why it's them. also unnerving. Because oh, at this true, point, true. Duke already knows that they're not necessarily to be trusted. So. Yeah. That's a good I mean, point. At the I, end, I, they yeah. gather all up to. Yeah. Shoot at you, and they also and gather all the end to shoot at you. Too. Yeah. And okay, there's okay, also you know, I, I see. there's also EDF cars parked outside. True, 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 true. Okay, you know I I will, I will rescind my idea. Because <clears throat> I think I think that's kind of the deal, right? Is that essentially they are the police force. Right? That's what it seems, yeah. anyways. Yeah, we can no, try like... to make that distinction, but I don't think we have yet. No, I mean, it wouldn't, wouldn't really make sense, because, like, again, yeah, there's there's the implication that the EDF is, like, the world's police force, either because the events of Duke 3D, or even before that. Right. Yeah. I mean, we can get, like, real dystopian about it if we want, but... No more lock and load people? 
Dude, that really hit me in the heart when you said that, because I, I went to play this level just to get a feel for, like, the trailer scene. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, running through that and constantly hearing that in every corner. Me. <laughs> every. It's a prank. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> there's, there's like, eight of them in there that all fucking say it. <laughs> they're all oh, really cool. loudly whispering the secret that they're going to attack you. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right. <laughs> so what's going on here. Oh, these are objective triggers. Cool. I can have this. one in the distance, but well, I don't think like eight of them all at the same time, yelling it at the top of. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. See, we got the bar guy. Okay, so lock and load people was fixed. EDF holding gun is fixed. Okay, so let's look at these strippers. The strippers. <laughs> okay. It, carefully. Um, uh, so, like, this lady doesn't have any hair. Which is a choice. She cannot have hair. She's also NPC male 3. Okay, let's fix this. Going for a Grace Jones look? Actually, that'd be a cool NPC model to have. It's like someone who's just like Grace Jones. Mm-hmm. Nothing special tied to this character, right? Doesn't look like it. No special orders, no special tags. Just a regular person. Just working a damn job. Maybe they were going to have her, like, have a deep voice, and that's that's why... Like... No, I'm more apt to believe that um, uh, they... Uh... They didn't have, didn't the, female have the female uh, UC yet. Yeah. The the female UCs are some of the most underbaked uh, actor pawn actor classes in here. So I really feel that they were just a very late addition. I mean, they were such a late addition yeah. to the point where I've made half of our female actor. I've made three fourths of the female actor classes that are currently in the build. So that's how yeah. undercooked they were. Yeah. <clears throat> Once again, we are. We are trying to build an entire game of a build that someone was working on, like, on a Thursday night. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's like, uh, have you read, read uh, Ken's Club for Leibowitz? Nope. No. So, it, it's, it's a really incredible book about, like, a post apocalyptic society where, like, this group of, um, like religious scholars are trying to obsessively like archive all known knowledge of like the past world by just constantly like rewriting everything they found even like shopping lists so like huh. shopping lists are deified as like holy objects that are like you need to constantly reproduce in case they mean something interesting and ever since reading that book i've been thinking about this build a lot <laughs> <Just being> like, <laughs> uh, yeah okay I guess I, yeah <laughs> You know, I saw something like that. Uh, it was a it was a book I read in school that was it was illustrated and it was like from the perspective of of a futurist unearthing you know the the twentieth century civilization and they mm -hmm. thought like they thought toilet seats were like some sort of necklace that people would wear things like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that I think the same thing? Talking about. Uh, similar idea for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because like. It's literally like this, 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 uh, this person who's trying to study to become part of this order finds a fallout shelter, and the briefcase is in it with like a a blueprint for just like some calculating machine and a shopping list, and like it literally causes a religious schism. Also, that book is like one of the biggest influences for Fallout too. So, if you if you like reading. Mitch, may you may I recommend a Kent Cole for Leibowitz? Yeah, I'm still. I've been reading through Catch Twenty Two. Ooh, that, nice. That's like a. Honestly, that's kind of a slog. Yeah, I, I, I can see. I have to be in a mood for it. But... Like there are points where it's fun. Other points. Yeah, where it's just like, uh, okay. Yeah. I feel ya. So 
someone made the joke, but what if, uh, what if they were male though? Like kind of like Star Newcomb did. And I guess I feel like my only response to that is, I know that's not what they were going for because of what I have to change in the bathroom. So. Yep. <laughs> it was the early two thousands. It was the early two thousands. Yeah. <laughs> and these developers posted on something awful. They like Jeff K, I guess. Hey, now she has hair. Sometimes you learn something about your heroes, and you're just like, ah. (laughs) Yikes. Yep. Uh, Okay. Oh, that was, that's what you thought, huh? Okay. You know, we can only hope that, you know, time has changed I, how I, they believe. I'm sure. I know at least one 3D Realms employee is, like, super cool nowadays. Like, Matt, Matt T. Wood is just an awesome person. Look at like how this cat door game. is made. Exactly. Little Kitty Big City looks adorable and fun and wonderful, and bless him and that team. I think he's made the best choice about living 3D Realms and just... I mean... Going... Did he work at 3D Realms longer than he worked at Valve, or vice versa? I don't want to say he probably worked at Valve. I think Valve he looked at Valve. Realms. Yeah, longer yeah. at Valve, for sure. Yeah, Which, cause... good on him, really. Yeah, no kidding. I think he's but... made the best choice. Does Valve still have any, like, actual game developers anymore? Oh, god, yeah. Yeah, yeah they got mean, plenty. They're working on, uh, what, Neon Prime right now? It's like the okay. one that apparently everyone's convinced they're doing? Supposedly. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Uh, nothing confirmed. Uh, they are certainly working on Counter-Strike 2. They had an update, like, last month. Though it actually still being developed. Have I mentioned... Okay, look, I don't know if, if, if I'm crazy or not, but, like, does Counter-Strike 2 have the juice? Or does it feel really flat to anyone else? It has a lot of problems. It doesn't have the same power that CSGO had to, like, keep you playing. It, it just, it feels like playing that... It feels sterile. Yeah. Like, it feels way too overpolished. Like, there's nothing rough or weird about any part of it, and it kind of just makes playing it feel... mechanical? Like, it... It reminds me a lot of playing Valorant, like the few times I played it, where it just feels like nothing has weight, and all the maps are you're not des- you're not supposed to look at them. You're just supposed to lo- navigate them. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, sort of. There's some maps that I've never played in matchmaking that I just kind of looked around and saw the things I could break. Yeah. I, I like the breakable stuff. I think that's fun, but yeah. generally it's just you don't get that part of it playing yeah. matchmaking. Yeah, I, I just I I was really kind of disappointed with how CS2 felt. Like, yeah, I only played like a little bit of it. I played a lot of things. Counter-Strike. I played about an hour of Counter-Strike, though. Yeah, that, that's that's pretty much that's what I keep how I hearing. Feel about him. Yeah. yeah, I think I, I, they... I did it like fifteen minutes. And it was yeah. okay. It just... Yeah, no, it it know. feels it, it is a incredibly polished, well designed title that feels like it was made by robots. Honestly, I was very disappointed that I couldn't play like gun game or anything else like that anymore. That's why I wasn't interested in it. Yeah, because all I, I had to all I had was sweaty mode, and I was like, I don't I really want to do that. They added gun game back in the last update. Well, right on. I don't know if it's worth downloading, re-downloading the 100 plus gigs, but that's good at least. It's only two maps, so I wouldn't say it's worth it right now. It's only oh. two maps? How hard? Why? Uh, Whatever. Um, they're specifically designed for it. They okay. I guess that's kind of cool. The other maps. That's, I, th- I think that's part of the problem, is that like there's no concept of, like, let's just try doing this. Everything has to be, like, competition grade. Like, Everything has to be purposely designed for everything else. Everything has to slot together perfectly. There's no friction. There's nothing weird about it. Like, yeah. why can't I play gun game on every map? Which is probably another reason why they should have left them separate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would agree with, yeah. 
uh, Louise makes a great point. Like Hunt Showdown is the polar opposite of like CS2. You know, obviously it's a different kind of game, but like that game feels really gritty and rough. And there's 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 like it is pushing against you as a player constantly. And like there's so much physicality to all the movement in that game. Oh, there's a beast. Oh. Hot Showdown is so cool. I gotta pick it up and play with you, Luis. One of these days we will. We'll definitely play that game. You killed people with doors in Hunt. I, I was actually just thinking about that for... Okay, their hairs look right. I'm not gonna walk into that room, because I know what they do. I know what you filthy ladies do. Being able to kick open a door would squish someone on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Give them the old build door treatment. I was like that. Yeah, I was like that. Well, because even with the build door in Duke Nukem 3D, when the door would go down and it would actually squish an enemy yep. like that, I was like, I mean, obviously it would have made things really janky from a, a playing experience, but yeah. it would have been hilarious. Well, even if there was like a like a specific animation, there were like you kick a door and like they get knocked down or something, that'd be cool. Yeah. Or they get staggered. Yeah, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Which okay. they do more experimental stuff with counter strike again like yeah ever since condition zero didn't do well i feel like they've just steered clear well I I mean, even they... source had experimental stuff with that like, yeah dynamic economy but everybody hated that one too so yeah like the, the, there's just i i need it's like when a cat is not being, being paid attention to and it just jumps up on something and starts like batting shit to the floor like, uh -huh. I kind of need a game to start batting shit to the floor for me to keep, like, stay engaged with it. Like, I need it to, like, have a bit of resistance to me. Yeah. I think... Yeah. CS2 I mean... is the Street Fighter V of shooters. I, I, don't, I haven't played Street Fighter V, but, yeah, everything has to be competition grade. Like, everything has to be esports. I want to bring back the randomness that Condition Zero tried with hostage mode. The uh, hostages would actually, like, be very reactive with what's going on and would like yeah. sometimes free themselves and escape. Yeah, that shit was huh. so cool. Like you have to pay attention to the objective. Yeah. And it's unpredictability. And I bet if you try that now, you'd have probably have some like a fucking phase clan weirdo like sending death threats to Valve or something, because how yeah. dare you mess with a perfectly well oiled machine? Yeah, there was apparently a major that happened. I didn't hear any talk of it. It must have really been very eventful with all of its... And yet, I bet we're saying all this, I bet that game is doing incredibly well still. Like, just like with oh, yeah, Valorant, no. you know? It's like, I may not like Valorant, but like I know people adore Valorant. That they, they spend their entire lives playing Valorant. They, like pay for rent by playing Valorant. Like, that's cool. Don't get me wrong, but, like... Well, just she's... looking at, like, the achievement stats on on uh, Counter-Strike 2 at this point, it's the one you get for opening the game, right? Yeah. And yeah. 20... It's still under 20% that have that. Oof. So it went from... Wow. You know, you think however many people had Global Offensive or whatever it was that turned into Counter-Strike 2... Mm -hmm. And it's only engaged twenty percent of the people to be able to even boot the thing up. That's not Bad. Huh. Huh. Yeah, I, I feel bad because I had somebody who um a friend who was trying to get all the achievements in the global offensive oh, before no. um, before the game get went away. And then it just got rid of all those achievements. Oh man. That's that's really sad. Yeah, I mean, some of them were unobtainable since 2013 anyway, because they were yeah. specific. Yeah. But still, you could download those maps and do them anyway. No, for sure. But like, yeah, just yeah, I I don't like this new world of just like we've made the new thing. The old thing is just gone to the memory hole. Like I, well. I... I mean, you could technically downgrade your version, but true, wants to do true, that, really. yeah. But like, it, I you will say, you shouldn't need to do that. Yeah. I am excited for one Counter Strike project, and that's Classic Offensive. Ooh, what's that? Um, if you know who Zerl is, I think his name is. 
Hold on. No, it's not Searle. That's the animator, isn't it? What is his name? I can't remember. It's essentially, um, like, classic 1.6, but made in Source, in a sense. Oh, okay. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can find some clips of it. I always find the weight of CS Source to be interesting. Like, that game feels so heavy to play. Yeah. What the heck is going on? Yeah, people hated it. It's like, I, I always thought it was cool. <laughs> I cannot figure out where it's opening the service properties at. I don't see it anywhere. Uh-oh. Frosty Moon Tips has posted a link for uh, Kosk Offensive. Ah, uh, beat me to it. <laughs> What's oh, that's up cool. Name, so I don't happening? fuck it up next time. Oh, I, I love I this. Mixed up his name. Give me just a second. I'm sorry. Yeah, like that looks great. That looks so good. Yeah, I really like um, just how it's trying to mix global offensives look with mm -hmm. you know, classic Counter Strike. Also, I like that they brought back um, the grenades. How they're like they fly sideways and are. It did for some reason. I just turned it back uh, on. Uh oh. Can you still okay, hear me? We're back. Yeah, we're, I can hear you. Strange. It's I back have, on. I have no idea what happened. I also cannot select anything in this folder but, anymore. Oh, what I was going to say is they're doing a lot of the experimental stuff, like bringing in the rocket launcher and riot shield. Hmm. Which... Oh, okay. I find those funny. Yeah. Again, just, like, friction. Like, sometimes it's cool to have an option that is just the bad option just because it's there. Because yeah. it'd be really funny if you did it. Like, just... Hold on, let me. I just want to steal this image because it perfectly represents what I would be doing the second that this comes out. And it's which one's gonna win, the riot shield or the rocket? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I'll, I'm definitely uh, follow that project because yeah, I I love I love. I love Source. Source will always look really good to me, no matter what. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Like, there's, there's just something about the way that renderer works, that every game that uses Source is just incredibly pleasing to the eye and the soul. Even the, the feel of movement and collision, collision yep. especially, like, yep. I mean, Bloodlines is probably, what, the jankiest Source Engine game? Yep. And that's still very solid. Yeah, absolutely. Like the the the, the locomotion of everything is just mm -hmm. incredible. Sin episodes, like yeah, for as much as Sin episodes is very like has problems, like the act of playing Sin episodes feels fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, so I was long to play. Like like I mentioned, like like CS Source, the the way that everything had like weight to it, that it felt like you were like moving along with all your gear, like you weren't just gliding along on the ground. Like I love the physicality of that. Even uh, Half Life, the original, mm -hmm. was it the Gold Source engine that? Yeah. That they had a really good sense of it too. Oh yeah. I mean, what what was it? They they in that document it said like they spent like hours like swinging the crowbar and like tweaking it until it felt just right or something like. Yeah. It must have been a mm -hmm. Valve thing, and then just everyone else kind of figured they knew better than to mess with it. Yeah, it's like we're gonna keep the player controller, yeah. not mess with it. I believe, specifically on the collision thing, there was a quote from like Gabe Newell that they spent like a year and a half just on collision. Yeah, for the source engine, which I mean, it shows I've never yep. fallen through a map. Nope. With Source Two, I can't say that. <laughs> are they still planning on making a Source Two like a free engine eventually, or is there are those plans shelved? Um, sort of, but okay. it's not through them. Rather, you know, Sandbox, the like Gary Newman project. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there is one. Apparently, with that, you can develop in sandbox a game, uh-huh. right, and then sell it on Steam when it's finished separately. Huh. Oh. Okay. So technically, you can use the engine for free. You just have to kind of develop it through a very streamlined version of it. I have access to Sandbox, and it's curse. Great. <laughs> yeah. I I used to have access to Sandbox, but I didn't use it in so long they removed my access to it. So. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, it does kind of suck. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? But, yeah. <clears throat> That's okay. Uh, it. I'll just say that I don't think it was really for me anyways. Like, I like being creative. I like mapping and doing stuff, but uh, I didn't find it super intuitive nor in-depth, personally. That well, being said, there are people who are definitely time. doing really cool stuff with it that probably know way better than me, so. Yeah. People have been playing, using Gary's mod view, like the most wildest shit you've ever seen in your life. Right. No, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, what was that, uh, Jazz Tronauts? That entire game, like, the fact it was done all on Gmod just, like, blows me away. Like, they based it a visual novel in Source, and it's amazing. That game is so funny, too, like, to this day. Yeah, so I wonder then, like, it, like so, like, if you wanted to go deeper, do you, like, contact Valve for a license? Is that just how that was going to work? Do they? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so let's, let's just, yeah, most likely. Makes sense. I wonder if anyone's going to do that. Like, I, wa- I wonder if we'll ever see. I mean, it probably won't be Source 2, but I'd love to see, like, a third engine would be nice. It'd be nice to have more than two options for making. Well, I mean, I guess. Godot is getting better and better with each passing day, and there are other game, other engines for smaller games, but like an engine at that level, you know what I mean? Right. What does uh, what has like Doom Eternal run on? Id Tech Seven. Are which... they not licensing that, or is it? No, no, that's not. Okay. It's all internal. But that's his internal toy then. Yeah. I, I think Indiana Jones is supposed to be running on Intech Seven, based on okay. like speculation, because someone saw like the the id editor like suite open on like a developer thing. Hmm. Like Intech Seven is fucking incredible. I mean, the only problem with it is that so if you use DLSS and ray tracing Doom Eternal, there's a very weird but like consistent bug where if you boot it up, it will run at, like, 12 frames per second, unless you, like, fiddle with, like, the texture pool setting, and basically it's the equivalent of, like, turning it on and off again, and then your frame rate's back. Hmm. Like, it's so weird going from, like, 12 FPS, like, oh, yeah, no, it's back to, like, 120. Hmm. Like, all it takes is just, like, f- messing with a single setting over and over again. So, like, if, if that rumor that they're going to be patching Doom Eternal to add, like, actual mod support uh it's true i hope they actually also patch that issue too because it is very annoying so i'm i'm thinking there's so there's id tech 7 there's you know obviously unity mm-hmm. Godot, unreal Godot, unreal game maker uh, crytech is that is that still around i know because yeah. i just finished prey crytech was uh the the crytech engine was used yeah. for prey I think CryEngine, that's used for on Showdown, yeah. Uh, I, I don't. Wonder I... Why... I wonder why they use CryEngine rather than Unpack they already had for Prey. Arcane kind of jumped around, I thought, with that. Yeah. Use. They used Unreal for some of it. Um, De- what did the later Deus Ex games use? I mean, that's yours. Uh, they use the Foundation engine, which uh, has its roots in the Gex engine for PS1, believe it or not. Oh. But that, I mean, that worked okay outside of being yellow. Uh, the first one 
worked really well, but the second one, because the, the, with, with Mankind Divided, they tried to do a new engine that was a mixture of the Glacier engine, which Hitman was using at the time, and then, like, some in-house tech. Okay. And... It's a bit janky, especially if you use like lots of anti-aliasing. Like it is mm. very crash happy once it runs out of memory. Like it won't just like cleanly give up memory. It will just fucking crash. Sure. But also that like, game looks fantastic. So and it plays really well too. I mean, the little bit I plays, I gotta play Mankind Divided at some point. Yeah, the TA is just gross. Although, like, isn't the TA, like, really, really early version of that? Like, because I know if you use MSAA, it just, it will chunk the hell up. Yeah, I mean, I played through it a few years ago, and um, I don't, to be honest, I don't remember. All I did was crank my resolution up and then go. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know as far as the I, I think I left the anti-aliasing just to whatever default was set. And it wasn't, yeah. it didn't look bad. No, um, no. I've never noticed it. I had no stability mirrors. issues either. Oh, those are mirrors. What the fuck? That looks really cool. That's weird. That's wild, yeah. Okay, I think I fixed the, uh, the textures on these doors. Nice. Oh, not this one. Yeah, I, uh, I needed play more Mankind Divided, because, like, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm just in this weird mood where I'm just, like, hopping between, like, thousands of games, just playing them for, like, 20 minutes, going, like, eh, I'm good, and then it's like, putting them down again. That's how it is sometimes. I, I got, yeah, sometimes you've got the gaming ADD. Yeah, prior to Prey, I finished System Shock 2. That was, Ooh, nice. that was a, a first for me there, but, uh... I wonder if that remaster is going to be shipping anytime soon. Did you just scare him? Oh, she pushed it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once I finish Prey, I might be... I don't know if I can handle the, uh, the time investment, but I do really want to try... Uh, like, I, I've got a backlog of games that uh, in substantial the at this point it, it's it's huge but yeah, i do want to try that. disco elysium and we'll see oh okay we'll see if i can handle it it's uh i played it for four hours and i was completely enamored with it and then i just got distracted by something else and i kind of i feel like i need to be in a very specific mindset to play that game and when i'm in that mindset i am in absolute heaven because that game is fucking incredible but when i'm not in that mindset i just don't wanna <laughs> i could see that like, like i've i've read both you know you can do anything in this game it's amazing that kind of thing and then it's mm -hmm. like you can fail and and critically injure yourself pulling up your zipper kind of yep. thing yep 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 100%. That is 100% accurate. You can <laughs> you can cause damage to yourself at the very beginning of the game by uh, failing the, the dice roll on trying to grab your tie from the fan. <clears throat> it's oh. um, it's an incredible speed work drum. of art. Speedrun dying. Yeah. <laughs> you can I mean, kill yourself extremely <clears throat> fast in that game. That, that is right, in the vein actually. of some tabletop RPGs, too, because there's things like... Um... Traveler is like that, where it's like Traveler, and there's one other fantasy based one where literally during character creation, you can kill, you can end up dying. In character creation? In character creation, yes. That's amazing. That's, a, yeah. That's really funny. I, I, how? Um, because they're, because everything is percentile based roles. And they decided that they were going to add that as one of the uh, one of the things that could be rolled. That's amazing. Huh. Uh huh. So like, is the implication you were just like born wrong? I. It, no, it's like literally like things like 
during your because during your character creation, some of it is like what were you doing before you became a traveler? You know what I mean? Oh, and okay, like all okay. these other things. You have like a backstory that dead ends a character creation. Yep, you can have a That's backstory that ends up dead ending a character creation. And now I think that like if memory serves, there's like abilities to roll that into other things. Like you can you can still work with that. You know what I mean? But uh, okay. Yeah. So you can be like a wraith or something. Uh, right. Or like an AI. That's, that's, that's kind of mm. fucking amazing. I love that. That's some flexible goddamn rules. Some incredibly in-depth ones, too. Yeah. I feel like there should I be mean, a... Like, I was just amazed with the old Fallout dialogue options when you, know, when you had, like, no intelligence and you could just really create, you know, communicate in, like, grunts and, and moans or whatever. <laughs> right. But, I thought that was pretty good, but God, I feel like there should be a lady right here. I should. I shouldn't, but I kind of want to replay New Vegas again <laughs> <laughs> for like sense. the sixth time. <laughs> that graffiti, you know the lady in the beer sign, who drew that? Probably a. One of three realms artists. Probably, I got, I'm gonna say based on the art, Paul Richards. That looks like his his art. That's a very like Paul Richards looking lady. If you look up uh, what he's drawn, um, if you do, it's some of it's not safe for work. Just FYI. I think he works at Epic now. I want to say. Like he works on, uh, say, Sony first before the developer from the '90s works at Epic and now works at Fortnite. I was actually <laughs> gonna say, Kel Surprise. I'm thinking about replaying Dead Space 2, honestly, but like on the PS3 where I can play the DLC for the first time. I've been wanting to do that the past couple of weeks, but like. Setting up my PS3 and all that stuff. Why the PS3 also, specifically? Just because you already own it there? Yep, I own it there. I have it on disc. I bought the DLC ages ago, but I just like never... I, I played it like twice on PC. Sure. But, like the DLC never came out on there. So mm. I've always wanted to check out that DLC. Even if it's like tiny or like short or whatever, I've always wanted to play it. And then like I thought, hey, while I'm here, why not replay Dead Space 2 as well? Because it's just a... It's a good game. Sure. So I feel like Dead Space 1 is still probably the game I like better. Dead Space 2 is still like fantastic. Like It's definitely an Alien Aliens thing for me. Because uh, Dead Space 2 definitely goes a bit bombastic. I'll take care of Frost and Moon Tips. Thanks for stopping by. And also because even though I have a 3080, that Dead Space remake is still... I mean, look, I don't, probably it's my fault for getting a 4K monitor, but uh, trying to run that game at 4K is uh, straining. <laughs> <laughs> I've only played like, the first like half hour of the remake. The remake is really, really impressive. Like, really impressive. Um, but the original always holds a special place in my heart. The original was, like, one of the last times I was ever, like, frothingly excited for a game. Like, I, I was, ex I was like, reading everything about it. I was, like, listening to everything about it, watching everything about it. I even, like, followed the, the Twitter account, and I became, like, somewhat friendly with the person running it. And I entered a contest to win a game. And I ended up winning the contest, so I had two copies of Dead Space at one point. Hmm. Um, I gave one to my friend, and yeah, I I adored Dead Space. I could not get enough of that game. I mm, incredible game, incredible game. All the hype was justified. <laughs> but like that was kind of the last time I had that level of hype. So I don't know. I'm sure once I uh, I play the remake like fully, my opinions will probably might might change because I know they do some really cool shit with like the side of the story works in that game. 
but yeah, man, I'm just thinking about like just how excited I was. Like I even played like the the ARG they had. Like uh, what was it? No known survivors, I think it was. And like they had like a thing where like you had to solve puzzles to like unlock like character stories. Hmm. Ah, oh, yeah, that game, man. Now I'm just sitting here reminiscing. <laughs> <laughs> I get it though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think this should be all the doors fixed. I swapped out the, uh, I swapped out the joke. Okay, so I'll put it this way. It's in the same vein without using that kind of language. So we'll yes. see if it works a little better. Okay. So just checking these doors, making sure they all look right. All these textures need to be touched up because they don't line up right, but that's okay. As long as they're yeah. the right direction now. We got a lady up here now. Hey, Liquid, you mind if I ask you a quick question about the editor? Uh, yeah, sure, what's up? Um, I'm currently using it right now, and I'm just... Uh, so I booted up the map um, with the trailer. Uh, okay. And for whatever reason, Duke's just kind of like stuck. And I can't move, but I can jump. And when I jump, he falls, hits the ground, and explodes and dies. What is up with that? Build. I oh, did yeah. hit build. I've, I have built multiple times. I don't know. Maybe I have like an uh, intersecting brush somewhere, but it seems like anywhere I put him, he fucking does it. But let me. That normally me happens it. when. Like, the reason I say rebuild is because that normally happens when. Uh... Yeah. You haven't rebuilt the map after placing a brush, and there's, there's some funky collision going on as a result of that. If yeah. that is something that persists after the rebuilding, you might be using an old version. Oh, an old version of the build itself? Yeah. Did you download oh, you the latest that? update that, that came down the, uh, four days ago? Well, no, I'm using the one that's on the Git, should I not? Well, the, yeah, the one that's on Git, but it's the one that's on Git that was updated, like, four days ago. Yeah, like, level design stable. Oh. Hold on. I'm going to be evil and use level design unstable. <laughs> <laughs> I got rid of that one. It was called level design testing. <laughs> yeah, that's just oh, that's... dev. Um, okay, so all of that is fixed, um, what else was I going to, oh yeah, the bathroom, it's sad, yeah, like I think this the... joke is more, it's like it's that, in the same vein, but a little more, a little yeah. better. Yeah, you'll, you'll all be the judge, because we, we do want to listen to the public on this one, we want to make sure we're hitting that goal. Maybe that works. <clears throat> I think it does. I think it works. I think it's a fair response for having some dude on the shoulder uh, while he's going to take a piss. Yeah. <laughs> it's not using a slur, so. Right, and, and like I said, it's still kind of in the same vein, right? Because it's yeah. still like. The fun homophobia. <laughs> okay, but it's not homophobic anymore. Like, no, really, no, I, it's I just know. you know, I, it's. I know. I'm just Rasnia. No, but I think yeah, that's absolutely right. If someone was to try to get your attention while you're taking the whiz, I think that's a pretty. Oh, that's a pretty standard response, I would it's a, say. It's a polite response, honestly. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we gotta make sure the player can get up here. I don't think I would respond such, so peacefully to that kind of yeah. thing. I was... <laughs> Maybe the oh, yeah. Such a cool little area. Um, you had just... a question. Uh, Not Michael 4 says, In the case of making new textures, where do you get texture sources from? Old CDs? So, a lot of the new textures we are making are actually being, like, handmade. Um, but we also use like other sources too. Like I know we use a lot of the 1998 asset CD. We have a lot of that checked back into the game. Um, but 
but yeah, I, I think most of that stuff is being hand done. I think there's still some photo sourcing still going, but yeah. like not as much. Personally, I used a lot with the a lot of the models that are of mine in the game, like yeah. the uh, laser tag thing, yeah, rifle or whatever. Mm -hmm. Which on my end for the photo textures, I'm using um a lot of uh, say photo textures. That's exactly what I said. A lot of photo textures to do. Like uh, texture.com, which they were free, but now they're paid for, so I just sort of take my own pictures. Yeah. Or just kind of the style of things, right? Yeah. I was actually thinking earlier this, today, I was watching um, uh, a new favorite YouTuber of mine, Cathode Ray Dude, uh, who was doing a video on floppy drives. He was talking about uh, old digital cameras he's used floppies for storing photos. I was wondering, I wonder what camera they used back in 98 to take all these photos. Like, I wonder what the resolution was of all these source photos and stuff. And, like, if we were to crunch down our textures down to that resolution, that, that source resolution, if we could, like, kind of... I mean, we have some of the source photos with yeah. the asset CD, so I'm sure we could get that answer as far as, yeah, like, like, what resolution they were and stuff. The DCIF info or whatever. Did they even use a digital camera, or yep. did they scan it in? And they used digital cameras. I remember Charlie said that, that like they they oh, okay. they had a bunch of digital cameras. Um, and I think the Prey Web Internet even mentions like, "Hey, we have some cameras. Come grab them." Gotcha. And this this would have been around ninety eight, so that probably would have been around the time they took that trip up to Vegas to like take photos of doors and shit. I legitimately wonder how people like thought looking at people just taking pictures of it was pre 9 11 it was fine <laughs> i mean i kind of did that last year yeah you, you get some looks yeah, yeah. it's still <laughs> seen as weird i mean yeah i got photo references for a bus and i had to ask the person who was sitting in the driver's seat and you can see in the frontal picture just the like most bewildered look in his eyes <laughs> <laughs> what's so cool about my bus I've had, um, personally, I've had, like, I've taken a picture, and I've had a police officer come up to me and goes, why are you taking pictures of a wall of a, of a tra train station, a tube station? I was like, it's actually textures. So I opened my phone up, and I was like, look, here you go, this is all the stuff, and I was showing him all oh, oh, okay, don't you make up? He's like, I can do, but realistic photos are even better for reference. So I kind of got away with that, thankfully. I mean, that sounds totally reasonable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember. You just say it's better than AI upscaling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think of the when the Max Payne team, when Remedy went up to New York to like fo do photographic reference, they actually were escorted by like, the NYPD. I want to say, like at least like a couple officers. If I remember that story correctly, because like they would go into like literally like gang areas and just like start taking photos of graffiti and shit. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, the Warground voice actor uh, passed away. Wow. Louis, Louis Gossett Jr. Yeah. Uh, it was also an Enemy Mine, too. Fantastic film that I keep meaning to watch fully. <laughs> but I like what I've seen of it so far. Yeah, rest in peace. Bowls of Steel. He's a fantastic voice actor. He's done a lot of stuff, actually. Like, his IMDb is quite rich. I wanted to see you after that show you just put on. Shows up, probably come resolutions. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I, I think we're definitely coming. I mean, I think we're already there. That idea of like people nostalgic for the old way of doing things, even if it's more clunky and it's like less like easy to do. Like, I know like forcing ourselves to use an engine from two thousand one that's half finished. Just yeah, because. some, some like that. <laughs> On the topic of um, textures, I did want to bring up, there's something I want to show you. There's another game that shares an exact texture from one of the asset CDs. Oh, interesting. And it's it's not 3D Realms related at all. Oh. But, at least from what I can gather. Huh. Um, I, I have to download the game, though. 
developers lining up to take photos of the same wall. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine it. Yep. Photo sourcing is cool. I, I know at least one developer who's like making an entire game based on photo source textures. Like, literally just goes out and takes photos of stuff and then just like imports them into like Unity and just goes. I say, it's definitely, I feel like it's a lost art. And it is. Maybe that's yeah. what really captured the such an audience with the, the DNF 2001 trailer. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, Max Payne, I can't think of a lot of other like well photo sourced games that have come out. And then we kind of moved into the Half Life, the Doom Three Vaseline smeared kind of mm -hmm. era. Yeah, everything normal map to shit. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I, I think Half Life Two has its own fair share of, like photo source textures, but like it definitely it, it hits different, as the kids say. Yeah. Yeah. But even even that was kind of a, a pull back from the direction that you know between Unreal and and uh, Doom in the direction that games were going there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, it, like it's in a way it's still sort of with us. I mean, there's, there's like photogrammetry and stuff, but like that's so much more complicated and it involves like literally like three D scanning objects that are just like a flat representation of it. Yeah, I could. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but like, yeah, it's just, it's just not the same. It does, it doesn't, it doesn't hit like it used to. I feel like a, a lot of that is is making modeling do the work where you could have the texture do it instead. Yeah, absolutely. You found sure about the photos with mega scans. Yeah, the, the mega scan stuff is is really interesting. Why is she not doing it? Have you guys tried Max Payne the first person mod? It's an entirely different game. No, I have not tried that. I have not. In fact, I remember being upset. Well, not upset, but like kind of disappointed that because I remember seeing a cheat for a first person mode, but it doesn't actually do anything in uh, in Max Payne. So, yeah, I'd, I'd be really interested to see what that was like in first person. I know there's one for Max Payne three, which is really really wild. I've played Action Source, which kind of made me feel like it was <laughs> or action quake that's what it was action quake 2 yeah uh that made me really think of a first person max Payne as far as the jumping around and mm -hmm. diving through things but there was God. a bullet time i i spent so much time when action half-life i freaking loved that mod i never i never played it on that i, I was a big team fortress classic player though yeah that era of Half-Life modding, like, it's it's incredible that how much creativity was in that, like, tiny subsector of just, like, every day someone yeah. was announcing something new. Like, maybe it never shipped, but the idea that, like, they were trying it and it was somewhat working blew me away. I mean, there was obviously Counter-Strike. <laughs> Day of oh, the specialists! Yes, yeah. Marky. Uh, <coughs> um, this oven texture is a slightly edited one of one that you can find in all the um, house photos in DNF. The only difference is that it has a grease stain on it. Huh. Oh, wow. Which, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to grab myself a drink of water. Interesting. That's the question to me. How did they share these two? So you're saying that if I go to C generic, all meshes, and pull up the stove? Um, I don't know if it has a model. I know it's a texture in the 98 CD. Wasn't that made oh, okay, by Rachel? Okay. And Rachel was originally working on the NF, so maybe they had some shared textures from the time. I don't know that Ritual actually did stuff with the NF. I thought they just offered to, and were denied. Well, 
one ritual made by X Three Realms people. I don't remember. Potentially summer. So there might be that potentially. Actually, it would be T generic. It would be M generic. Uh, Mace RT one's asking, "Wait, to have a new update ready uh, to be announced?" We're still yeah. working really hard on what we got going. I wish I still had the asset CD, but the drive it was on is uh, kaput. Oh, we can definitely get that to you. Oh, dang. Uh, while I was grabbing water, I was also remembering another great Half-Life mod, the Opera, which was like the, the, the third kind of action movie mod. Along with the action half life and uh, and the specialists, but the opera had like a really awesome um, PVE mode, Mook match, which was really really fun. Yeah, uh, Sparky, opera is so good. Natural selection was platformed on, oh. on Half Life as a mod. Natural oh, yeah. selection was so awesome. much that natural was, selection. That game was brilliant. The fact that game did what it did on the Gold Source engine to this day. Just astounds me. Like, how the hell did any of this work? <laughs> My God, there's just there's just so much stuff you could do with Gold Source. And, and it seems like we'll never have oh, something like that ever again. Yeah, what they're trying to do is just every well, everyone's doing their own thing here and centralized. Like it'd be yeah. better back then. There was no. You know, trial version of Unreal or whatever, exactly. Infinity, that kind of thing. But now yeah. it allows people to just go and, and start building. Why aren't building. you doing it? Yeah. Why aren't you doing the thing? I, I, just, I just feel like there's a difference between capital G games and mods. That like I, I wish there was more mods still, but like yeah, that doesn't really make sense to make. Like, especially you're trying to get in the industry, like making a mod versus like making your own game in Unreal yeah. or something. True. Because like, God, how many people were hired in the industry on the basis of like their Half-Life mods? Like, <laughs> countless. <laughs> Even Left for Dead. You know? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Valve, Valve grabbed them. Portal. Yeah. Same deal. Yeah, Gunman Chronicles. That's a really, that's really right. awesome. Yeah. I mean, that that's an entire game. Like that, I I really like Gunman Chronicles. I actually never played it. It's cool. Or I I started a demo, but it wouldn't. It, back at the back then, I had a Pentium One Two Hundred. Oof. It required a Two Thirty Three, so it was kind of like a family slideshow. Oof. Yeah. Uh, Sparky says Cry of Fear. Cry of Fear is really, really impressive. I know people like the clown on it, but like when you consider what it's doing, it's really neat. I don't think you should really clown on Cry of Fear. It's like, sure, its voice acting can be yeah off at times, but and know, it's, it's very edgy. Yeah, but it's not I don't like think edgy. it's the worst edgy that you. No, can no, absolutely not. Like. It's definitely like the product of like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not hatred. It's. It's more like when I say edgy, it's like <laughs> a depressed teen's diary, edgy. Versus yeah. like, my name's not important. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, edgy emo kind of. It's 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 more goth than emo, I think. Oh like, god! It's, it's more like this this these this person was listening to lots of like Marilyn Manson and Depeche Mode, which like, hey, listen, buddy, I literally had Depeche Mode and Marilyn Manson on my phone right now, and I am in my thirties, so. Maybe I, sh I shouldn't be throwing stones. Thanks. Sweet thing. Listen, Mechanical Animals is a great album. <laughs> Almost. Almost got this fixed. Okay. So, what happened here, and the reason this doesn't work, is because they've essentially... It looks like 
this has been redone a couple times, and they have a bunch of old mm-hmm. events that it's pointing to. Yeah. So, switch patron dialogues. What is switch patron dialogues? Huh? Interesting. It's another dispatcher. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. Basically, it changes it changes people's dialogue. Literally, Ooh. basically. So, like, after you get the key, they won't talk to you about getting the key anymore. Oh, okay. So that's part of will handle. Um, the maid realizing you have the gun or not. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, but if you don't mind to have the gun at all at this point, it's more like a limitation we have with the safe mode. Safe well, mode does not remove guns from you. I'm thinking more using that kind of dispatcher in, uh, in Penthouse. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's already helped. I can probably remove Null Event. I refuse to believe that Null Event is a real thing. Watch you delete that and everything breaks. Oh, it is a special event. That's back here. That... Visibly does nothing, but I'm not going to remove it just in case. Just yet. Here we go. It's fair, Sparky. Yeah, I I guess cry, when I say cry fear is goth, it's like... Hmm. I don't know. It, 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 it's a vice-based thing, but yeah, a goth game is more like American, American Mickey's Alice. Yeah, that is like the the premier goth game, I would say. I don't think any goth... Yeah, BTM Bloodlines, like, yeah, those, those are two examples of, like, capital G goth games. Those are games for people who have black nail polish... Fishnet stockings and combat boots. I still wish I had my original box copy of Alice, but like when I was a teenager, my mom. So, like, we moved around a lot, and one time I moved, and my mom literally just threw out all my boxes. Like, I saw all the discs, but she threw out all my boxes. And she's yeah. like, oh, I guess they got lost in the move. And to this day, I'm just like, do you understand how much those things are worth nowadays? <laughs> yeah, is it really even opened? Uh, they yeah, I, yeah. I think you still get like sixty, even like forty bucks for an open copy of Alice, especially if it's like, especially if it was a first run. So we had her with a knife. Oh, yeah. Like I bought that the day it came out. I mean, video I games are weird like that. Of, it doesn't uh, always sin open. And wages of sin. Sorry. What was that? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say... The... Stream. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's not like no, that. Um, uh, I was just going to say that um, uh, with video games, it's really kind of funky because it's like, you know, Earthbound Just Loose is like a two to $300 game now. You know what I mean? And like yep. PC games I know are a little different, but still. I yeah. Mean... Uh, I'm not crazy here with thinking that these two are the same oven, right? Like, it's just one has, like, restain put over it. Really. They probably shared stuff from back then. Yeah, I just... I, I wonder what the, um... The sort of order of events that led to them sharing it. Sure. Just so everybody can see what we're talking about on stream here. I'll pull them up. Honestly, I think that's... You make a good argument. Like, I, I think, like, you got a point here. They definitely look pretty similar, even to the point yeah. where, honestly, even to the point where the other grease sta- they share the same they share some of the same grease stains. They're also lit the same way too. You see like, the flash. Yep. Yeah. Well, actually, oh, it's flipped. That's what the difference is in DNF. The very top of it is flipped. Because I was like, well, the the lens flare or the the flash flare is on the right of this stove and it's on the left on this stove. But then I looked at it and the top of it with a little like white line streak is up here aligns with the right side of there. So they flipped it on the Duke model. 
game stole from 3D Realms? Question mark. Super interesting. All these games look connected. I swear. Wasn't this from Ritual? Yeah, Ritual. The and, textures. Uh, I mean, so even this level has like a lot of copies of Sim in the background. Yeah. Can you confirm my DPC? The whole uh, 3D Ritual was uh, X yeah, Ritual was all like 3D realms. I'm trying to think of the, the sequence of events. Because uh, they left in 96, all the Ritual devs. So, I'm not yes, sure yes. how they would have got that texture. Because the, the, the texture, like, when 3D realms went to go get textures, they went in 98, was my understanding. Unless they all were, they took a picture of the same oven or something, which is 100%. Like, that is possible. Totally yeah. Reasonable. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. I just don't know how you get the exact same flash and all that. Exactly. That, right. That's the weird part. Or an artist moved over later. Either that or they actually had connections stolen and managed to get people to share them. Maybe it came from uh, a generic I, I, I doubt photo source the, the relationships between uh, Ritual and 3D Realms were not good. <laughs> what well, if I, it... I don't know. Cause I, I, my Sorry. understanding is... Charlie wanted to push to a, to keep Quake 2 engine and adopt Sin's tech, and everyone else didn't want to because the, the idea was just like, <laughs> fuck those guys, they abandoned us. They, they didn't believe in us. So, again, that's apocryphal. I can't point to any specific reference, but I do know that at one point that was, try that was an attempt by Charlie. And their guns are floaty. <laughs> About the the skeletal animation. Yeah, because like the specific problem I think they're running into with Quake Two was uh, they couldn't do outdoor maps with the engine just like fucking dying. And Sin's uh, ex extensions to how the maps work would have fixed that, but instead they were switched to Unreal. And here we are. I mean, Charlie didn't leave till I think two thousand four, two thousand five. Because he left with everyone else in that like first big exodus of the DNF team. I thought so Charlie remained until the end. No, no, Charlie was gone by 2006. Because he went to uh, to Gearbox, and then from there to certain Infinity. Oh no, Gearbox, Infinity Ward, then certain Infinity. That makes me wonder if the Hoover Dam level, uh, it's not a Hoover Dam level, but it's a, it's a dam level in Sin, if that was inspired by a Duke Nukem Forever plot. That thing. I would not be surprised. That that seems very much like something that was kind of thumbing their nose at their, uh, their old workplace. Yeah. Because I want to say the Hoover Dam thing, that was, that was something George wanted as early as 97. But then even Half-Life had. It had a yeah. dam in it, so yeah, everyone was just and damn crazy. Eye. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of <laughs> a lot of damn maps there. Take care, Moss. Yeah, thanks for joining. I actually do have to hop off too. But, uh, oh no worries. I mean, it's get, getting to that time, right? Yeah, yeah. We're going on three hours of the well, stream. Take care, man. I'm basically gonna finish up what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. cool. Keep it easy. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Yeah, anytime. Right. Take care. Later. Wow, really, really uh, transparent here. The uh, the NPC's name is Slut. Thank you. Uh, cool. Sick. <laughs> Wait, oh, you yeah. tell me that three rounds had weird opinions towards women? That's so <laughs> strange. Huh. The company that would allow you to play porn on your on your computer desktop with, on your speakers had weird problems with women. Huh. <laughs> the company that had a stripper come to the office every other week had weird problems with women. I'm so shocked. <laughs> oh, maybe that'll fix it. Oh, the story. The stories I have heard. <laughs> Sorry, I've been so quiet. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually fiddling with this level now, and I'm going because no I'm actually fucking stupid. I can't find the player start in the actor class. 
Oh, dude, uh, you don't even need to. If you can just right click on open space on the map and add a player start. That was one of the yep. uh, that was one of the changes we added in Duke It Out 0.2.1. Hmm. No, it's uh, not appearing for me. Uh -oh. I also tried to um to clone the branch, but I think I did it wrong. Yeah, I think you've got an old version, bud. Because yeah, like if you look at my screen, uh, if I just like right click on open space here, we added play add a player start and we added uh add a path node. I have to have the wrong one then. Yeah. Let me uh. Let me I like what? What's up? I eventually have some ideas on how to improve this part, so it's not just killing the guy. Scrapping it up a bit more. I have sure. uh, gears returning. I'll eventually turn you to it. I mean, Slipgate, we're making a do Newfoundland game nowadays. I mean, yes, it's not official, but. We are going to prove that you can still get away with it if you are smart about it and you know what you're doing. Yeah, I, I don't really like that kind of like mentality because exactly. um, it kind of gives the impression that there was something wrong with what was going on to begin with. Because like, you can't make a Duke game. Okay, okay, but like when you say that, like if we think back to what Duke 3D is, like the most controversial thing is that there are there are strippers. Yeah. And some like body horror stuff. Yeah. So That's... like I, I mean this mentality that you couldn't make a Duke game today, like there are games with strippers and body horror stuff, like I don't know. You definitely They're could accessible ones too. Yeah, right. So yeah, it's I just, just I just don't agree with priorities. that statement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what is going on? Step one, on? have women on your team. <laughs> Step two? No. Um, What's <laughs> happening? Step three, profit. But no profit for us. Um, no. No, that's what I'm saying, Slipgate. Like, you say with today's generation, but, like, what do you mean? Like... These kinds of games get made all the time. I think that's like a... Yeah, it's a false Zoomers narrative. Love, like, yeah, and, and Zoomers love shit like Euphoria and like... Right. Very violent shit. Like, you can totally do it. It's just a matter of like, okay, you Doing can't it be gross about it anymore. Yeah. Oh, Oh, that's what's going on. Why is that? Oh, wait, no, I did want that. Fuck. What is happening? New Finnish Interactive Multiplier. There's so many goddamn co uh, dispatchers here. Yeah, there's a lot going Not on. I haven't seen any of them yet. It definitely needs to be cleaned up. Oh, I, I... I should show you some of uh, the Pentel stuff in the back. <laughs> Cat alert. Oh, Aww. cat time. It's been a while since I've heard your cat in well, She's been loud. She's fine. I hear no screaming. She wants to be pet on her. Aww. My cat, uh, well, one of my cats, uh, we researched her to wet food because she's been to be an old lady and we were having a problem where she would eat, and she'd eat really fast, and then she would just kind of throw it up after. But switch when she's into wet food, she's been a hundred percent fine, and we're really happy about that. You were like, "Oh God, what's going on with her?" 
She is currently sleeping in my bed right now. Very good. Yes. Robin Uh It's probably not my clasps are open. Oh, hang on, sorry, my the identification disappeared. One second. Take good care of your pets, people. Exactly. You have a responsibility to them. Uh, was there anything useful found in the maps that were actually got used or activated in the builds we have? Yeah, tons. Tons of stuff that we've reactivated and like rebuilt that we found to be really interesting. Like uh, the the bit in on rooftops with the bit of masonry that crushes the guy running away. That was originally like a, a commented out sequence. And um, just in general, the stuff that has been done to Penthouse includes a bunch of stuff that was seen in Horizon Ford. Yep. Or some specific test maps for the Penthouse. So I've been running through all those with a fine tooth comb, I guess is a good way to put it. Yeah. I'm seeing stuff that specifically was neat that we're trying to do, but it didn't stick with. And I'm seeing not to redo it in a more modern way, I guess is the best way to put it. As yeah. in, we have less limitations on the front. Yeah. So an example is uh, the sign destruction. The sign mm -hmm. destruction as it's done right now, as each letter getting blown up, rather than uh, just a mover getting swapped for another. So you yeah. see that being much more dynamic, and it's also still based on where it's in for, does it? Or the pool area, or specifically the lady in the pool that is mm -hmm. drowned, is very akin to what they seem to be wanting to do in Horizon 4 at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. So it's basically seeing what they were going for and trying to combine ideas where it makes sense. Yep. Not always like that, but it's still trying to keep that in good consideration, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So confused. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's a good way of looking at it, like making definitive versions of maps based on like what we have in the build and what we can like look at from like trigger logic or scripting notes or things like that. I mean, obviously, if there's a sequence where it just sucks, we wouldn't use it, but like there's lots of good stuff in a lot of these test maps and that we could like throw in there. So that's supposed to be Bombshell, right? The the stripper who's being talked to? So that's another interesting thing is is that she's named Robin. Very specifically. Huh? She's very specifically named Robin. Well, wait, 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 wait. That could be a reference to like being a sidekick character, Batman and Robin. Oh! That's fair. <laughs> True. Hmm. Excuse me. <clears throat> Come on. My uh, my throat's a little bit dry. I'm talking. <laughs> Here, take this pack up to the private dance area. I've got something extra special I want to do for you. After that, say you just put on. <gasps> I got to work. Oh hell yeah! I fixed it. Or So this is something nice. that's nifty um, uh, that I have to fix, figure out how to fix too. Uh, this right here, though, you step right here and press E. This like foldable ladder comes down. Oh, okay. Don't Which know what I'm gonna what put up in the attic place. yet, but okay. So that worked. I'm happy with that. So now. What I have to do is, I think, restore these two things. There we go. So I'm going to save this really quick. And then I'm going to roll Hey, y'all got plans for us the weekend? No. Work. Um, let's see. Audience. Uh, I'm probably going to play some World of Warcraft here after the stream, and Hell then yeah. uh, my guess is that I'm probably going to do the, that most of tomorrow, too. 
Um, uh, and then um, I got, even though, you know, not really an Easter guy, um, uh, I got uh, some food, some good dinner for us to, tomorrow. So I'm going to make us nice. uh, some steaks, going to make us some ribs, going to slow cook the ribs and the, uh, the slow cooker all day. Hell yeah. And then uh, I got some artich artichokes, or not artichokes, some uh, asparagus. I'm going to make some hollandaise sauce and some potatoes and all kinds of fun stuff. I'm going to just Damn, dude. cook a whole bunch while oh, my yeah. girlfriend's working tomorrow. Are there, uh, is there like, like a big dinner? planned or is it for us uh... <laughs> <laughs> for <right>. us yeah <laughs> i'm uh i'm probably going to be studying all weekend probably i'm going to try to take some time to like relax here and there definitely get yeah. it but yeah. uh but yeah it is it is even though it's the holidays it is crunch time because lectures end on the 8th and i have to have all my assignments in by the 8th and uh the good news is, though, is that, like, I am doing better than I expected in a lot of my classes, which is a very awesome feeling. Good shit, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even if it means I'm on campus till, like, 7.30, because I, when I get there at 8.30, it's, uh, it's worth it. And I'm looking forward to being able to relax after lectures are done and just take it easy. Oh, yeah. Nice, dude. Yeah, there's a massage therapist on campus. I have, a, I have an appointment booked with just like beat the stress out of me, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Suppose you don't have I don't have a Duke Nukem wallpaper on my desktop. I really should uh, get one set up. This is just specifically a computer I use only for this. Yeah, development computer. Yep, it's specifically a dev computer. It's a little old Z book that's got like 32 gigs of RAM and oh, enough yeah. storage space and a little external hard drive hooked up to it for me and, and everything else. Yeah, we just fixed that liquid. Yeah, that's what we were working on right here. Yeah. So that says they're currently on spring break from university. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It was so weird when March break rolled around and like because our breeding week did not line up with March break, there were so many students who were like bringing their kids to lectures because like what the hell else are they going to do? They can't afford uh, child care. Yikes. Well, they're actually pretty really well behaved though. Like all That's the good. kids that were in the classes were like, they had their headphones on and uh, just doing their thing. That's good. Their parents were learning. Yeah, it was actually really, really well good. Good, good. Yeah. This is very funny. What is this? Trigger... Oh, I bet you this is enabling and disabling weapons. Yep. Oh, Have take care, one, Chris. Friend. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So basically, now all I want to do is make sure that her animation, what does this do? Maybe this will reset after she uses it. That'd be cool. I also have to like rotate it or something here. keep thinking about like i'm sure i mentioned this before about like <clears throat> building a purposely very low spec pc uh to see like if our current build still can like achieve like 30 or 60. Sure. i have a friend who i might actually pass something on when we ever get a, a proper xp build Ooh, nice we have a proper xp build well i mean Okay, it's a proper XP build, purchase, but you need SP3 and you need yeah. you need 2015. Caveats. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, they're probably working on uh, based on what I was reading in the in the pre internet. They were working on like generation ahead hardware at all times. Like they had connections at Intel and Nvidia because they were working on there we go. Pentium threes uh, when Pentium twos were on the market for Prey. Hmm. So if we could extrapolate that, we could probably say like, oh, well, they're probably working on like if. The Pentium 4 with Sears are probably working on, I don't know, like, Colons or something. Is there an NPC that gives you a key card through their hand? They hand you one? Yes. Where? It's the lady from the Dance Sense Revolution. Oh, does she actually hand you one? Yeah, if you win. Okay, so where is... Oh god. Getting that Dance Dance Revolution machine uh, running well is going to be a nightmare. Yeah. Also, the bombshell girl gives you a, a, a key card as well in the lap dance, right? Hmm. Pause. Okay. Not purring. No, no, that helps. No, no, it does. It does. Um, basically, I'm just trying to figure out, yeah, this. What this data is supposed to be so that it's placed properly in her hands. That's enjoying the attention. <laughs> She's not Which letting me do anything, but it's okay. Aww. Oh, you for the best. Yep. You're on cat time now. Uh, wish we were in the timeline where we got Duke Shades OS theme for XP. It would probably be a killer bonus for fans. Yeah. <laughs> That'd actually be pretty cool. Like, making some, like, Microsoft Plus ass, like, desktop theme where, like, Every button has a different sound. Oh, I I love that shit when I was a kid. I remember I had one. I got I told the story before, but I had one desktop theme in particular that uh, it was based on. i absolutely butchering the name here. Um, oh god, what was the name of it? It was it was an anime that was on at the time. It was like a Zerkin Cha Cha or something. And Almost. Cha -cha. Very close. Akazukun Cha Cha. Uh, and so the way with that desktop themes worked is that the sound files were like 8 kilohertz, I think. And every sound that Windows made was just screeching in Japanese at 8 kilohertz. <laughs> and I wake up at like 6.30 because I was, you know, a hyperactive kid on Saturday Turn on the family computer, and it would just screech in Japanese constantly. And I remember one time my dad just comes out and says, like, either you need to change that theme right now, or I'm going to destroy that computer with a hammer. Because, like, they, he was trying to sleep. I was right. Like, oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the, I remember the Resident Evil themes that they shipped with, like, those game, those PC ports were really fuck cool, too. Like, they made all like, the, the inventory noises. Ugh. So good. I wonder if they ever got the Prey engine working. They did! Uh, there is a working build of Prey tech that Fred has, as far as I know. Like, that it is... You can execute it, and you can do things in it. Hey, look at that. I have been told that the, uh... What's that? Nothing. I'm just happy that it works now. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I've been told that the Prey tech was actually really impressive for the time, and it's, uh... It's a shame the Three Realms didn't have the bandwidth to see two projects to completion. I wish I had been brave enough to help her out. Now you'll probably get to have sex. I never get to have sex except with myself. <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> Good old Texas speech. The actual message oh. too is just <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. This is before Corin Yu. This would have been um William Scarborough, I think was lead on the tech or was that uh Paul Stuima? I'm probably mispronouncing that name too. Okay, so I'm gonna have to make it so that 
Ah, okay, it's looking for that. Use it on the back door. Is this not labeled back door? Oh, well, that's uh, not the... It is labeled Yeah, that's back not door. the place you're meant to go. That's yeah, it is. Place you're meant to go. No! VIP door. Uh oh Oh, did the stream cut out again? No, no. Oh. No, this is the door you're supposed to use it at, because right here, this is inside the this is inside the strip club where I just was in this back corner here. After I got the key card, you're supposed to use the key card on back door. This is a quest trigger looking I think for my cat's it. Tired of being fat. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a player proximity and use special event twelve. Okay, so as if you try to use the door without the key card. I wonder if it's like not unlocking the door. Wait, there should be another door basically inside the dance room. The lap dance room, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you should see it. I can show you. I, I, I promise that's the right door. Hopefully we'll be finished by the time you graduate, Michael. <clears throat> At least we'll have a oh. lot done by the time you graduate. That I can promise you. There are two. My bad. How does it know the difference? Unsolved mysteries. Hmm. Well, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay, it's just dumb. It is dumb, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to mm -hmm. be any kind of way. No, it's uh... You were digging through maps, they're just... Yeah. Messy. Yeah. yeah, I just have a little more... Uh... Navigational through that, I guess, if you want to call it that, because it's uh, it's a yeah, to dig through. It's weird that it triggers the first time set up every time you uh, up to the you dance area. push this test button. I them for next suggested I want to see you after that day you just put on. Um, but the weird thing is that, how, okay, so again though, how does it know the difference between this key card and the key card I'm going to get the, from the stripper upstairs? It's the same. There's no difference. All right. right, but I used it on him and it opened the door. Yeah, it's uh, the same key card. Uh, oh, I'm going to have to do this again. Excuse me. I'm going to have to... Uh, Go here and then turn on the standby screen. There we go. <laughs> that should be enough. Just use your imagination, folks. Actually, I think I think TOS. No, don't use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> think about baseball. Right. Think about baseball. Yeah. Think about uh, what is it? Uh, Shohei Otani. The scandal going on right now. Just think about that for like a few minutes. See where this leads. We've got to find the president. Think about how much gambling has affected everything in our world recently, and how weird that is. I can't leave you hanging like this. Head on out to the VIP area in the back, and I'll show you some real explosive action. Where's spring training? Okay, so she hands me a key card. Okay, I can. Where's spring training start usually? It's already started, I'm pretty sure. My my uh, okay. friends were on Discord last night talking about baseball, so. 
they were watching something. They were both watching the same game, talking about it. So I assume. Okay. Okay, and see the key card worked there. So somehow the game knew. I had a different key card. Maybe there's another trigger that the things on board. Maybe she gives you some kind of key card with a special tag. Mm -hmm. Oh, and she's definitely clearly a bombshell. Because she's labeled as such. You mean Robin? She's labeled bombshell. Robin? <laughs> so, <laughs> event is bombshell gave key. The S is capitalized in shell, too. Okay. TM. Uh, yeah, TM. Uh, okay, so this is an NPC activity event and a dispatcher. Okay. I'm trying to fix the pool now. I'm feeling inspired. Hell yeah. Gives key just a generic key card. And that generic key card does not have a special tag. The hell? Um, okay, so here's the SOS dispatcher for that. Sex dialogue, give key animation, dance, null event. Tag bombshell use. Okay, let's look at this door again. Maybe there's something that activates this door. What? I don't really see anything unless... Oh, hang on. Is this VIP door set to... Yep, other trigger turns on. Figured it out. Mm -hmm. I figured it out. So mm -hmm. basically, the game... Yeah, the, the trigger system is set up to where if you pick up a key card, this quest objective trigger does not trigger until you set off this VIP door. Once this VIP door has been used, it enables this trigger down here, which enables this door to be used. This is definitely something we'll have to change in the future when we actually do more quests. Have items. multiple key cards? Shouldn't. Yeah. 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 But honestly, it's a, it's a key. really smart way to work around it. Mm-hmm. Get things shipped. No, I definitely agree with well, you. It's something that's going to have to be changed. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. Something that they were building the events. And yeah. They were building them with these specific uh, workarounds so have the, the flow working and they could test stuff out. Yeah. But then they eventually would have to fix it. Know, like it's kind of like, like, like what we did yesterday. Right, and yeah. it's kind of like what we did yesterday with the whole uh, the the whole dropship thing. You found a way to do it through triggers and everything else like that, but really it. Just is a code change that we can tweak that does the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Game development. Um. Okay. I'm just used to this bullshit at this point. <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I mean, honestly, it's been three and a half hours. Um. I thought yeah. I, th I feel like we covered it quite a bit today, and the vod is going to be really long as is. Um, um, so yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll call it there. Really productive day. Um, uh, oh, I got yeah. to show off some new stuff. Uh, got to, uh, work in some levels that we haven't really worked on on stream, um, uh, all that much. Got some cool concepts shown and a lot of, uh, just like bugs fixed and squished. So, I mean, heck you could actually play through this now without it. Well, you could before, but I don't know. We fixed some stuff, you know. <laughs> you were all here. Yeah, you all saw the magic. You happen. all saw the magic happen. Um, right. but yeah, has anybody else got anything else to add before we uh before we go? No, just that I'm pleasantly surprised with what what's going on. I think everybody <laughs> else is too. I think it speaks for everybody. Yeah, we're yeah. Uh, we're we're trucking along. We're making awesome progress, and uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by, everyone. Yeah. Everybody, uh, keep it easy. And, uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Oh, yeah. Later, everyone. Peace.